Hi, everybody. This is Ken Wilson. Once upon a time, I broadcast blues hockey. I always listen to Let's Go Blues Radio. It's everything you'll want as a blues fan. Oh, baby. Stop doing those diet or workout fads to lose weight. Use the tried and true approach from Rock and That ID Life that helps you find balance while enjoying food in moderation and nourishing your body. Try the Lean 30 program at rockandthatidlife.com and let today be your last first day of your weight loss journey. When buying or selling your home, you need to feel protected. Realtor Mike Burgoyne not only looks out for your interests, but as a St. Louis area police officer, will make sure you feel safe and well-informed with every decision. Email Mike at strikewithmike.com and start the process today. That's Mike at strikewithmike.com. Get ready to hear some noise tonight. You're just seconds away from Let's Go Blues Radio. No doubt about it, eh? You're listening to Kurt, Bill, and Jeff on Let's Go Blues Radio, the original St. Louis Blues hockey fan podcast. Take it away, boys. Welcome to episode 25 of season 13. This is episode number 456 all time of the often imitated, never duplicated. We have come to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and we're all out of bubblegum. We're the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Let's go Blues Radio. Special thanks to our sponsors, Dustin from RockinThatIDLife.com and Realtor Mike, uh, Mike Burgoyne, who you can email at Mike at StrickwoodMike.com for proudly sponsoring the show. Please check them out. Uh, Also, don't forget to check out our t-shirt shop at Let'sGoBlues.com for some well-designed and fairly priced blues-themed t-shirts. We don't mention this at the start of the show, but we should. Kurt recently... uh, did a uh, uh, revamp our discord server so make sure you check us out over at let's go blues.com slash discord correct i did want to, i did want to mention that yeah that's yeah you can access the link that way and, and find out information about it uh, let's go blues.com slash discord uh would love to start and there's actually some feedback i got on the let's go blues.com forums about the discord server and it uh apparently some of it wasn't accessible we had the permissions wrong before so uh um, oh boy i kind of just changed things around they have a they have forum channels too that are available now so it's more like a discussion forum set up uh in certain parts of it and we also have the traditional discord uh text chat uh channel as well for like game day stuff or whatever so uh cool. if you like the forum format they got the forum options too on there so it's uh so for folks that use the let's go blues.com forums it'd be an easier transition we do want to transition away from the let's go blues.com forums uh over to discord uh in time so uh that'll be a thing happening eventually do we have a drop dead date on that no 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 but it'll probably be um in the off season sometime okay cool Yep, so again, that is Let's Go Blues.com dis- slash Discord. Check that out. Um, it is Wednesday, March 27th, and we are streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, maybe Instagram. It's giving me trouble. I have no idea if we're on there or not. We are also on at the Corner TV at Patty's Pub, uh, <laughs> wherever you get live video casts. To interact with the show on social media, our handle on all social channels is at LGB Radio. Just search for us and you'll find us. And if you haven't already done so, uh, please like, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, buy a T-shirt from our shop, listen to Kirk Price's other podcast, Beanie Baby Fever, or do whatever you can do to help us out. Uh, I'm your host, Jeff Ponder, and I'm joined by Kirk Price and Bill Day. Of course, producer Austin is facing allegations. The agenda for tonight includes the Blues' quest for the playoffs, an injury to a fan favorite, the Blues signing a young, young star, uh, all that and more on this extra sassy edition of Let's Go Blues Radio. Uh, right here at the top, I do want to mention that uh, I am fighting something off. I think it's a cold. I don't know if it's allergies. So if you hear me sneezing or coughing, I will do my best to cover that. But uh, I do apologize if that does happen at all during tonight's show. Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? Great. 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 Well, mm. the blues fan in me is is frustrated and suffering, but personally, 
I, I think the I, best way to describe the blues fan in me is kind of puzzled. You know, like um, I, I'm like torn in sense of like I'm proud of where this team's at because I and proud of myself to be quite honest because this is where I thought they'd be. Yeah, that's but sweet. I think yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but at the same time, it's like I want them to make the playoffs and I right. want me to be wrong. Right. So it's kind of a weird spot I'm in. It's as if all of our preseason prognostications were setting ourselves up to be super happy when they made the playoffs, right? Yeah. Like, well, you know, lowered expectations and all that. And yeah. But, you know, you, you, you predict them to be, you know, on the bubble, you know, uh, whether they just miss it or just make it, you know, that's that's a shot in the dark as far as how it's going to land. But we kind of, you know, Armstrong said the same thing as far as where this team would be. That's kind of where they are. So uh, um, I, I think I, I picked them to sneak in as a wild card. Um, they they might, but it's going to be Take really tough at this point. Yeah, I mean, they got to go something like probably 8-1-1 one, and one, and if Vegas goes 500, something like that, you know, so they, I mean, it can they can do it. Their schedule is super easy, which we can talk about later. But that that uh, they have the opportunity to at least try to do it. But that we'll talk about again. That the the well, and lost, it's funny because lost opportunity against Vegas to get two points regulation that hurt. We say that we need them to go eight one and one. Honestly, they could just go. I mean, I hate to say it like this because you know, I don't want people to get their hopes up. But you know, they could go three. I don't want to say three. Let's say five, four, and one, and Vegas can just lose out. You know, but, well, I think I, I like that to happen. I think I'm like realistically speaking, right? I, yeah, I mean, I Vegas' agree. schedule is a lot tougher. There, yeah, I can pull it up, but they're like in the middle pack, and they've I mean, just got so many injuries. They do, you know? but they're getting goaltending all of a sudden now. Uh, yeah, so that sucks. But um, they had it against us, and they had it for most of the game against Nashville. <laughs> But yeah. until the third period. But uh yeah, so I mean they do have injuries and their schedule's a lot tougher than ours, but it's not really tough in terms of the entire NHL. They're like seventeenth and then the middle, something like that. Uh we're like we have the second easiest schedule from here on out. So yeah. you know I, I realistically you gotta think that Vegas is gonna probably go five hundred, maybe at least. So um if you wanna make Vegas win games, the Blues have to go on a nice tear. I would love for the Blues to go maybe 500 and Vegas to lose out. That'd be fantastic, but I don't, that's probably not going to happen. Right, and and I'm with you. I think the realistic thing is the Blues have to play their best hockey of the season. Vegas has to just, even just play 500. Blues can still get in. And which the Blues have been playing very well. Uh, right. They, they've, they've been on a nice run. Now, granted, they had a hole to dig out of, and they've they've been one six of seven uh, going into the Vegas game. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's uh, right, and and that was that was the first point we dropped them for. I mean, yeah. that's that's you know the one game you can't drop a point to. Uh, yeah, you do it. So, and that was such a that was such a, and we can talk about it when we get to it. But that was a that was a good game. I mean, it was. That, that was, was a really good game. It just couldn't could not. I mean, they got, they got really good goaltending. I mean, they're, they're both the teams. They did. That, yeah. that was what, that mm-hmm. was one of those games where it was like Bennington played great, but Thompson played that just little bit better, and <clears> it's <throat> unfortunate. I think the gap was a little bit wider, but they they were both good. Well, and he yeah. had massive save on the breakaway on Hayes. And, well, well, we, we'll yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to that later. We, we had a whole segment on that. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. Um, and uh, I'll add, uh, let's see. I actually have two things I want to talk about. First of all, uh, I did mention before the show started, uh, Bill, I did get a new kitten. He's running around here somewhere. I was going to hold him up. Uh, three months old, beautiful black cat. Um, wonderful, sweet little boy. Um, we decided to name him Nandor De Laurentiis. <laughs> That's his full name. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I don't know uh, the reference. Explain the reference. Nah, that is, it, it's a deep cut from what we do in the shadows, the TV show, okay. not the movie. Uh, Nandor is one of the main characters, but uh, his real name is Nandor the Relentless. He's like yes. an old warrior Viking type guy. 
uh, who becomes a vampire living in Staten Island. And uh, he goes on the news in the latest season and the, the news anchor asks him, um, you know, what's your name? And he's like, Nandor. And he's got this thick accent. He's like, Nandor the Relentless. And then they put on the screen, Nandor D. Laurentis. That's <laughs> and yeah. and it's just I cracked up at that. I had to like pause it the first time I watched it. I was laughing so hard. So you're like all in. Cat. You're all yeah. in on this. Uh, right. What we do in the shadows. Uh, oh like, yeah, a casual what we do in the shadows fan would have just named the cat Jackie Daytona. Right. That's we considered that too. Right. That it, was it, that it, was. But close. that's too easy. That that is yeah. too easy. So yep. That, exactly. That is that is great. Black cat. Yep. Yeah, named after an Andor. I love it. Yep, I figured you would. Other thing I want to say, I'm going to call you two out right now. Uh, um, I listened back last week uh, a little bit, not the whole thing. What we get wrong? Um, and you didn't get anything wrong. Of course not. Um, I listened back after listener Leon, who I know is listening to the show. He's one of those guys who he says when he's into a podcast, he does not miss a second. Okay. And so I know he's going to hear this. Uh, listener Leon told me Saturday, Bill and Kurt were fucking crazy. You were not acting out of sorts last week when I came on and I had a couple gummies in you New York were City. Acting out of sorts. He <laughs> said I was acting fine, and you guys were going. You guys were overplaying. Not initially. I agree. Init- initially, you were fine. Right. As, As this went on, right. You got loopy. That and, was, and I imagine because I was exhausted too, well, just, right. <laughs> which which goes into the decision, right? You know, at, at least if it were me, I, I would have thought twice about um, how many milligrams I was taking. Uh, but yes, yeah, sixty. Yeah, I took sixty. Sixty <laughs> milligrams. You you were loopy, and, and I'm sure I, I'm sure Lister Leon has uh, it has been around you to to know how you are when when What's, you're. That uh, is that's a influence. good point. Actually. What's the recommended yes, dosage? Five to ten? Oh, pff, that's, that's what it is. That's nothing. No, that's, come on. I'm telling Not you. Not an experienced man like myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You looked like you were handling it really well last week when it came I, to Hey, I was, and I was a couple beers deep too. So plus I had I'm that just... that what's the beer from uh butter beer? But butter, yeah. butter beer? Yeah. 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 I almost said Buzz butter. Beer, which is uh Drew Carey. You were you couldn't get enough water last week. Oh, well, the problem is in the hotel rooms that you you get that size cup of water. It's tiny. Yeah, but that's also because you were so thirsty. Okay, all right. I mean, there we go. It was funny. It was funny. Leon listening live tonight. He says, "To be fair, to be fair, be fair." I was listening on the podcast. I couldn't see his eyes on the YouTube. I will say, you missed you. you Check out his eyes. Yeah. When I yeah when I when I do anything like that i do go like this a lot and i think mm-hmm. even uh beaver uh, uh what's his name kyle beaver on the show is what he calls himself i think Big even beaver. he called me out saying ponder open your eyes so <laughs> i i do understand that there was a there was a uh, a question uh by uh, trees in the um chat is, is there a link in the chat for the discord stuff i just posted it it's a let's go blues.com slash discord um and we are like i said uh, uh in the tweet I sent out there um, looking for suggestions. If you think, you know, there needs to be uh, more channels, less channels, uh, different kinds of channels, uh, whatever, you know, let us know. And we, it's a work in progress. You know, we'll uh, shirtless pics of bill. We could add those into uh, channel. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, I was, <laughs> is there a scramble porn channel? <laughs> They're doing well better. How funny would that be just to have a YouTube channel? I'm sure there is right. Where it's this just scrambled be- porn the whole time. Just on a loop. Like, 24 hours of scramble porn. You know how many kids would be watching? Wow. Well, right. the, the internet's a thing now. Right. So you don't guys, know guys but, of a certain age. <laughs> right. I was going to say. Living out their we, childhood again. Yeah. Yes. We'll be sitting there watching and just <laughs> laughing like fools. Because it's like, oh my God, this is my childhood. Yeah. I'm wait, you're waiting on 10 minutes. Saw a boob. That was a boob. Yep. That's all I need. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Good, good times. Good times. Uh, well, official beers of episode number 456. You can follow each of us on the untapped app. Kurt is at C price 12. You can find me at J Potter 94 bills at Billy blue note 33. I forget. Is it bill first now? Yes. Okay. 
It is Bill Bill. first now. And first, I have to shout out um, Trees with the Bull Durham reference in the chat. Candace uh, to make a nice gift. <laughs> it's I, it's I Bull Durham's it. time. Right, it's Bull yeah. Durham time of year. So yeah, it, 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 that's. I, yeah, I couldn't place it, and then you said that. Like, that's it. That's the meeting on the mound. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. Yes, <laughs> love that movie so much. Uh, I, I will, I will debate that that is the greatest baseball movie of the '80s. It's so close between that and uh, no, no, Major League, <laughs> Major League. Oh, Major League. That's that's yes. the best. Yeah. In my opinion, I like Major League. Major League, that's they're my favorite. Both, they're so neck and neck, but just different, different kinds of comedy. Yeah, yeah, so, agree. I just so. Major League is just more my kind of comedy. I mean, I yeah. can quote that movie all day long. I can quote most of Bull Durham, and you know that's it, it's it's yeah. So many and Bull Durham actually has like a pretty damn amazing soundtrack. If you ever if you ever go watch the music credits or pay attention to the music in it, it's fucking incredible. Right, Los Lobos is in there. Um, Smithereens, Soul Asylum, like before they were really anybody. Way back in the eighties, very good soundtrack, awesome movie. But we're here to talk about beer now. We are. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, where is it? Where is there it is? Oh, so oh, KBS, KBS, oh, nice. it's spicy. It's chocolate? the Mexican spicy chocolate oh, KBS. I, I love Mexican chocolate beers. It's yes, good. it's um. It's good. It's no Abraxas. You know, I, I, I do really, it, it's, I, I, I'm not a perennial snob and perennial makes great beers, but I'm not like, Oh, if it's not perennial, it's not the best. Abraxas is the bar setter for, for chocolates. Uh, Where is perennial brewed? St. Louis. St. Louis. It's, that's what I thought. There. Okay. Yeah. It, that's what I've I thought there. because yeah. I was, um, I've not been there. Um, I knew it was Missouri. I wasn't sure if it was exactly St. Louis. Is, is yeah. that the one in Clayton? No, it's it's uh, off 55. Um, uh, it's right by River de Pere. It's, okay. It, it is. It's, yeah. So it's not far from me at all. Um, <laughs> it, I asked well, because I was I was at a bar in New York that had perennial. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's odd. And it was perennial. It wasn't a different brewery called perennial. I was very, very surprised. I don't, I haven't been there in years. Um, I was not overly impressed with the inside of the brewery, the tasting room, uh, because it was kind of bland. Yeah. And it's like just open and yeah. not really there, but I may, they may have changed it since then. I don't know. Yeah. But. It's, it's, it's probably been longer since I've been there, but yeah, it, it kind of had a, uh, like, uh, you know, Late fifties cafeteria style feel. Yes, the inside. Oh, yeah, the tile floor, uh, yeah. drywall walls. Yeah, not much to look at, and there was a big bar, and then they had the beer, and it was just, right. and that was it. I mean, but the beer was good. Oh yeah, yeah. They had a chocolate mint uh, stout that uh, was really good. It was called Thirteen, I think, um, something like that back then. Delicious. It was really good. Uh, is it Kurt or me? I think it's me. I think it's you. Is it yeah. me? Go ahead, it's Kurt. Yep. Uh, I got another candy bar stout. Uh, my b- beer fridge down here. I found a couple more. <laughs> so I've got the Four Hands uh, Snickers uh, chocolate milk stout. Nice. So if I get nice. to a second beer, I've got the Almond Joy. So. Ooh. I got an Almond Joy in there, and I got and I found one of these, which is like, oh yay! I got another one of these. So it's, and I have I do have a, a little ramekin here of some peanuts and chocolate chips to go with it. So ooh, don't eat it on the air; you'll get yelled at. I, it'll be in our our iTunes uh, uh, reviews. Uh, yeah, before yeah, you right. go on the show, God. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Uh, so mine is uh, Goose Island three one two Weed Ale. Yep. Uh, having this tonight. I don't know if I've had this on the show before, but I do enjoy this one. Moving, um, and moving I went to the warm weather beers. That's right. And I will add, I'm drinking it out of my Slimer glass nice. that I got from uh, Alamo Draft House for the new Ghostbusters uh, did movie. You, oh, God. That's, I may, I may just have to go on my own. Julie is like totally against going to the theater anymore, but uh, I need, I need to see this Ghostbusters in the theater. So <laughs> it's, <clears throat> it's worth seeing it in the theater. I'll say that. Um, I would think if you're going to see it, it'd be best seeing it in the theater. But Jeff, I don't think Dan Buffett liked it. Um, I didn't either. 
I didn't either, honestly. So. I was surprised. And I've seen a lot of people say they love it, which, hey, good for them. Um, but I do think of the four, I don't include the female one. I thought that one was garbage. Um, but of the franchise Ghostbusters, uh, I do think it is the worst one. But that still doesn't say I, it's a bad movie. It's still a good movie. It's just the worst of the four, in my opinion. I think I think uh, I'm pretty... Pretty well know how it's going to go for me. I think. I think I will like it just because it's Ghostbusters, and I. Right. It's like, That's how I am. You know, when Weird Al releases an album, I'm going to like it just because it's Weird Al. You know, yep. it just it's just the way it is. And whether it's good songs, yep. bad songs, whatever, I will like it. You know. Yep. And well, you you still get that jolt of excitement when each former Ghostbuster shows up. You know, like oh, there's you know, because I'm not giving anything away. I don't think by saying this, there's Bill Murray, there's Ernie Hudson. Like when they first show up on screen, it's like this jolt of excitement. Like, yes, the original Ghostbusters are here. Yeah. You ever think Ernie Hudson got a, a, like a bad rap? Like he was never liked, he's always the extra guy. He was never like, I mean, he was a Ghostbuster, but he was always like, are you talking about Winston or are you talking about the actor Ernie Hudson? I'm talking about, well, Winston, I'm talking Winston. Okay. Winston. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zedmore. Right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, he's, I mean, he didn't have a ton of lines in the first one, you know, and it's like he was like a secondary character came on late later. I don't know. Yeah. But I, the beauty of of Winston Stedmore or Stedmore, not Stedmore, Zedman, um, Zedmore, Zedmore. Mix God them. damn it. Mix Stedman them. and Zedmore. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so the, the beauty of Winston was he was the everyman. Mm-hmm. You know, you had the three scientists, you had yeah. the three guys right. that, that I, I get started yeah. the Ghostbusters. But yeah. I think that was the beauty because by the second movie, right. to me, he was a central character. And that's what I loved about him is he was just a hardworking dude. And then you find out in the third one, he turned that into like an empire. And now he's just like a billionaire. Like, I, I love that storyline for him. Yeah. I just don't think he had much of a I mean, he did, I get the, the, the role he had, but as far as like his impact on the first one was like his, I don't think he had enough lines in the first one. He just didn't say a whole lot to like, the every man could have been a little more every manny with his lines and have more of them. Uh, nah, I, yeah. I think the scene in the mayor's office is it was my like, favorite. My, yeah. you know, my favorite line of his was, I think it's it was big true. This he, man yeah, has he, no dick. He goes, he goes, tell him about the Twinkie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about the Twinkie? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That the that whole the sequence in the mayor's office is yeah. what what really solidifies him yeah. uh, into like, you know, kind of like he's kind of like, you know, the dude's rug. It really ties room together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, let's wait. Let's we've get become into... a pop culture podcast all of a sudden. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, we like, could do a Ghostbusters podcast. Uh, over we're the practicing summer, for the offseason. That's right. Yeah, right. Right, we already uh, have baseball movies. We, we should the we Ghostbusters just have franchise. a show over the summer where we don't even talk about the blues. We just talk about pop culture and shit. And I think that'd be fun. We should do that. I've ta- I've, I've I've thought that would be a fun thing to do. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, so talking about blues hockey, uh, Oscar Sundquist is going to miss the rest of the season with a torn ACL in his right knee. He'll undergo surgery on his right knee following an injury in the March 25th game against the Golden Knights. Uh, Sunquist was checked in the corner in the offensive zone by Vegas defenseman Braden McNabb and went down awkwardly midway through the second period. He was helped off the ice by his teammates and Blues head athletic trainer Ray Barilli and did not return to the game. After going uh, under, after undergoing a further evaluation, it was determined that Sunquist will require surgery and will be re-evaluated re-eval- in six months. Sunquist has played in 71 games for the Blues this season, posting 21 points, six goals, and 15 assists, and 32 penalty minutes. Um, so if anybody knows anyone who's had an ACL sur- uh, injury or surgery, they're so weird because we saw uh, pictures today, Lou Korak posted, and un- un- uh, undeservedly got some shit for this after the fact. He posted a picture of Sunquist standing on his own power, no, no, uh, no crutches. No, well, as far as he could see, no boot. Uh, and just watching practice. Oh and yeah, he was like, well, that, on this other class, right? Yeah, and yeah, he was like, it, not- perhaps he's okay. Like it, it might not be as worse as we thought. Well, then this came out, and everybody's like, this aged well. And it's like, if you know anyone who's had an ACL oh, injury, you can still walk on it. You can still even run on it on certain points. But there's just certain things you can't do. Like you can't 
pivot your body at all. You can walk in a straight line. That's it. Your lateral and so, is probably no good. So yeah, and so for for him to catch shit for that, I thought was bullshit. Oh, P- but it's, it's, good for good for Sunquist, uh, getting the surgery now and not waiting. I I'm not saying that they would have, but clearly they found this issue. Do, Hopefully he'll be back. Uh, let's hope maybe by mid October. Do, do you expect anything less from Twitter though? I mean, no. no, the fucking toxic culture that I mean, you, if you say anything. And, you know, he's making an observation. He's not a doctor. Right. right. He's making an observation. Oh, well, he's standing. Maybe it's not as bad. Probably what any of us may think. Oh, is he's not on crutches or he's, I don't see a leg boot, a leg caster. And it's just, God forbid, you know, you, you jump on somebody for just reporting what they're seeing, you know, and giving their perspective on what they're seeing. I. I, I I fucking hate Twitter sometimes. It, that was people, part of the reason I stopped doing what I was doing because I was just like, I don't think I can handle doing this for my career or the rest of my life. Like every little thing I say is scrutinized and put under a microscope. It's like, needlessly. like you said, it, yeah, needlessly. it's like you said, the dude is just making an observation. Here's a picture of Sunquist at practice for those of you who can't be here. And he looks okay by my eyes. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing to tweet. And they they wouldn't like it if all he do, did would be just be like a robot and say, "Here's a picture of Sunquist." That's it. You know. Like, oh, yeah. oh, thanks for the insight. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. People are morons. I, especially you know the keyboard warriors, right? Keyboard Sitting at home, just, warrior. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 toxic, man. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, so the injury itself. Sucks for the Blues, but it looks like uh, they are trying um, Zach Dean in his spot at least tomorrow night. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, it's like a, I think we're gonna the, the the silver lining. I guess or the plus to right. This, that we're we're gonna see time. a Dean, sure. a Bull Duke. We're gonna see these guys get time now, like more than ever during a a good playoff stretch run that um, you know is gonna teach them a lot of valuable lessons about playing in the NHL. And plus, the Blues is uh, the Blues is. Uh, the 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 blueses, the blueses, the blueses, the blueses. MVM, do you know where your children are? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jeff, I got, I, I got, I was I got like reaching nine. for it. I'm like, why can't I click this button? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and so the blueses, young kids are going to be getting a shot here, and I think that that's. I, I, oh, I was going to say the fourth line. There's some skill there with Walker and Torpchenko and and maybe even a Sammy Blay if he comes back in the lineup. Like there's still some skill there. These aren't this isn't a Reeves and Porter situation. So he's still going to be playing with guys that might be able to score a couple big goals. Here's the big thing for me though. He's not on the power play anymore, which I was I was done with that a while ago. Yeah. So who replaces him? I I'm betting it's going to be Kapanen. Kapanen. Yeah. I'm betting well, he's going to be capping. I'd rather a people do. How about in front Torpchenko? of the net? Torpchenko? And, Torpchenko? Oh. Yeah. Torpchenko. Would be Hayes. Great. Hayes in front of the net? Yeah. I mean, because that, that was that was Sunquist's role, right? I mean, it was floating around the front of the net. Yeah. So, mostly. Or, or let Brad Richards mix it up a little bit. T- take some other things, right? You know, try try the kids. Try Boldu. Right. The kid's got a great shot. Get him, get him opportunities, you know, on the man advantage. I, I, I totally want to see that. And then, and then if Minnesota gets bounced this weekend, sign Jimmy Snuggeru, bring him in there, only play him on the power play. He's, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. If, if they get bounced. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, as soon as they, they're done, he'll, he'll be up here. What, what, what the, what the, the, the speculation was the latest he would be here would be with a couple games to go in the season if they go yep. the distance. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, so lights on geometry. Apparently, not a fan of Oscar Sunquist. Bad signing by the clown, which later he says that's Army. Tired of seeing Ott's face. Time to send him to another city. Uh, and then he says, uh, "Sunkiss looks like an eighty-five-year-old man skating." Um, he's not yeah. the fleetest of foot, but. I never has. I like been. him on the fourth line. I think he's fine. I don't. I don't have mind him on the fourth line at all. I, I, I don't mind him on the fourth line. Right. If go back, go back to when we first acquired him. 
and there was commentary about like it it takes him you know 10 seconds to skate a circle at the <laughs> NHL level like he he uh, was he's never been the most fleet of foot guy but but he is you know he is a heart and soul guy and yeah to to your point um it does does appease the grinder fetish that this city has yeah I, right. I, that, that's that's most cities you know they they I they think- like the grinders I, th- I do think that's a little unfair, though. To be honest, I think he brings more than just your typical grinder. I, again, he's a he plays on the power play. That's huge. Um, not that everyone's a fan of him on the power play, but I'm not. He, but yeah, <laughs> I agree. I'm not either. But still, he that's, is. On the power that's play. that should be your elite skill on the power play, and he is not there. But well, I, and I do like him. He's a good grinder. He's and, and I know that's what we're talking about him being a grinder. But I just I don't know as a fourth line center, he's good at faceoffs. He's a good body in front of the net, and um, I, I think his his skill with the puck, again, not the fleetest of foot, but I think his skill with the puck is above average in terms of fourth line centers. He also doesn't. I think he he doesn't like Steve Ott. Yeah. So, which I'm curious as to why. I mean, when the power play was sucking, it's easy to point your finger, but. Power play has been good since Banister has been here. Yep. So and Brad, I don't like Richards, that as a player. And Brad Richards, right? I I don't I don't I, I hate don't it not as a player, but as a coach, it, it's hard to gauge how important an assistant coach really is. Yeah, unless you're in on the practices and and yeah, yeah and on the bench in the game, it, it, that is tough. Uh, really, you're looking for okay, what does the assistant coach control? Whether it be the power play, the penalty kill, whatever coach is was working with that, and how is that? segment of the team doing in a game and if you're not getting production from that from what they're responsible for well then it reflects badly on the assistant coach so i, I and the problems with this team i don't think are necessarily uh with steve ott but you know you, you could you could have said that to start the season when the power play was awful so i don't know lights on geometry does say uh goes back to him as a player yeah i i hated him as a player too when he came here i hated him when they re-signed him to that ridiculous deal that he did not earn. I hated that fuck. more. But why, why not hire Kirk Maltby and put what? get the fuck out of here. Okay, lights on geometry. You're going nuts here. Kirk get Maltby. You can handle Kirk Maltby as a player, but not Steve Ott. No, I think he's saying it's, it's he, the he's same making thing. an equivalency. Here. Yeah, he's saying it's no ah, different yeah. than putting Maltby on the bench. Steve Ott, okay. the player, was always a low rent Brendan Morrow to me. Yeah. And I agree. You know, that he was or, he was a guy in in the in the uh the Moro build in that you know that Moro was one of the gems from the Dallas organization that Armstrong always looked for. And yep. you know, I, I Ott had what he was captain in, in Buffalo. Um he has leadership skills uh you know as a player uh but you know his he, he oh. had a you know he, he he's like I don't know he, I I guess he's similar to Dallas Drake, right? Good leader, not great hockey player. For about three years, was it? He was yeah. a, a Steve Ott was like a fantasy hockey, right? Oh yeah, great player. Yeah, Brandon Morrow hockey. too, because he yeah. Ott put up some uh, a handful. Of, he put up enough points to be a decent option as a forward, and he got a lot of penalty minutes. So he was he was like uh, he filled out a number of categories for uh, yeah. Fantasy if you went, plus minus two. If yeah. if you were yeah. in the ESPN league with default settings, those two guys were fucking money. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Well, I think we're going to take a break. Uh, we got plenty more to talk about here, guys. Again, the Blues uh, did sign uh, one of their young rising stars, as well as uh, win a couple important games, get some points in these games. We will talk more about that on the end of this break. Other end of this break, uh, you are listening to Jeff, Kurt, and Bill on Let's Go Blues Radio. We'll return after these messages. We've all tried a diet or workout fad at one time or another, but it always ends the same, right? We either lose the weight and then get back to our routine, but then put the weight right back on, or it just simply never takes hold. It's time to move into a habit-based program that focuses on organization and simplicity. Rock and That Idea Life's Lean 30 lays it all out for you with the correct food to eat, how to meal prep, and even sprinkles in plenty of healthy recipes. With Lean 30, you'll get the full ID Life arsenal, including energy for that needed kick, a tasty nourish shake for your needed fiber intake, slim plus to help control your cravings and provide a metabolic boost 
Lean capsules help bust those sugar cravings, and IED Nutrition gives you the added punch you need that takes the guesswork out of what supplements to take. Join the many who are seeing success and make this your last first day on a new program. Visit rockandthatidealife.com to get started, and remember to email Dustin at rockandthatidealife at gmail.com for an extra 10% off exclusively for Let's Go Blues radio listeners. Start your transformation to the confident, vibrant person you've always wanted to be with rockandthatidealife.com. St. Louis hockey fans know how it takes a reliable captain and a team of hard workers to achieve major goals. As a police officer and a hockey player, realtor Mike Burgoyne would wear the C in any situation. As a leader in the home buying or selling process, Mike has surrounded himself with a team of trustworthy inspectors, lenders, and escrow officers that work together more cohesively than Hall & Oates. And as a member of many teams in his life, Mike knows the service are first responders, veterans, nurses, teachers, and yes, even you let's go blues radio listeners provide the community so we offer special rates to those individuals find the value in mike's leadership and teamwork today by emailing him at mike at strikewithmike.com or calling 314-753-4060 he'll work closely with you and only show you the homes that match your goals that email again is mike at strikewithmike.com or call him at 314-753-4060 and succeed with your new teammate today and now, back to Let's Go Blues Radio, the longest running St. Louis Blues podcast with Pr- Pr- Price, Ponder, and Day. Hey, real quick. Did yeah. you see what Light Sound Jam here said in the chat? about? Did you hear I'm about reading it now. About uh, what Ruby said on the on a Philly podcast? Ruby said on the Philly podcast he had to talk to Hitchcock each day on a video call. And apparently... Uh, Hitchcock is still kind of coaching this team. I know he's still on the payroll. That's right. known, but I didn't. Yeah. That man, really? According Every to Brubay, that's what, and according to Lights what, on Geometry, that's what. What podcast? Uh, Lights on Geometry. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Um, because that's, that's true. That's, that is that is odd. Yeah. I mean, and coaching to what degree? You know, is he just like? Is he? Did he have to talk to Hitchcock, or it was like a like a conference call kind of a thing? We're just going over things, and Hitchcock's in on it. You know, I don't. I'm. I'm what degree are we talking? Yeah, about? if it's like Ruby's, like, yeah, I call him because I want his advice every day. Okay, that's a little different. But if it's like I'm told I have to talk to Hitchcock every day, that is a major issue. Well, I hope that's not the case. It wouldn't surprise me if they have like some kind of a conference call every day. Um, about the previous game or the practice or whatever they're, you know, whatever, or looking for the next game and all the assistant coaches and uh, Armstrong and uh, whoever, you know, uh, Brad Richards. Right. So, and I, and with Hitchcock being on the payroll, it doesn't, su- I mean, I, I guess it doesn't surprise me. Do you notice something interesting about this, uh, this thing I just pulled up here, this comment from John Anderson, I mean, Vegas wins five games, which two do the blues lose? Oh, how about okay. the fact that that's a Twitter comment? Have we seen that pop up on here before? I don't think so. Interesting. Okay, apparently you can comment on Twitter. That's yeah, cool. uh, fantastic. Yeah, we just we just see the feed that comes in. There's a little icon next to them all, and that's uh, yeah, that's the first yep. Twitter comment we've had. That's a good question, though. It's a really good question. <clears throat> yeah, so we, he should we, get he should get comment of the show just for breaking <laughs> new ground and yeah. asking a great question. Comment because, of the show, John Anderson. Congrats. You win nothing except my admiration. Because we've got, uh, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, yeah, the Blues play Dallas, uh, Carolina, Edmonton, and Nashville. That's the toughest teams. San Jose twice, Chicago, Anaheim, uh, Calgary, and uh, Seattle. So, you got to figure they'll might. The, you know, they've always played Dallas tough, so I wouldn't pick mm-hmm. Dallas. I'd yeah. probably pick Nashville and Carolina. Yeah, maybe definitely. No, you you know they're going to do a total blues thing, and they'll beat Nashville, they'll beat Carolina, but they'll lose to Anaheim San, and Chicago, San Jose you know? back to back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. I yeah. um, that's that's a great question. Um, because you look at the schedule, the Blues do have a pretty easy schedule, but there are a few tough teams in there. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I I'd say Carolina and Nashville, those are the teams. I mean, I mean I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The the teams that would lose to would be uh, 
Carolina and yeah, Nashville. I'm going to say San Jose and Chicago. <laughs> Just because that's a total blues thing to do. And, uh, and one... Anderson says Calgary and Edmonton are his picks. Okay. So they got, so uh, his question was uh, if, if, if Vegas wins uh, five, that would give them a 16 point lead. The blues would have to go eight, one and one because yeah. they, they need 17 points. Right. So they have to take one of those losses would have to be in overtime. Oh, that's, terrifying. I know, man. I mean, it all depends on what Vegas does, right? I mean, you you got to win your games. If you can go, if you go eight and two, and Vegas goes five and five, then Vegas, I think they have the tiebreak. So, winning unlimited chimes in in the chat here. Says San Jose is oh six and one post elimination. So under the gold plan, they right. would not be getting the number one pick. That is true. They'd be in bad shape. <laughs> yep. But under the current thing, they're in great shape. They're in excellent shape. Best thing they can do is lose games. Uh, okay, it looks like Light Sound Geometry says the Nasty Knuckles podcast with oh. Riley Cote and the Philly Equipment Man. I don't. That's not. I've never even heard of that. Chris Nyland is not on that. It's called Nasty Knuckles. It's not Chris Nyland on it. Yeah, he's he's a Montreal Boston guy. I know, but yeah. doesn't he have a Knuckles podcast or something? Yeah, probably. He, no. Might not have trademarked it, though, I guess. I guess not. Knuckles and Fisting is the name of his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like fighting. What What do you guys think? Get your heads out of the gutter. Of the two teams, too, that he played for. It's like, you know, the, the two teams that hit each other the most yeah. in historically in the NHL, right? And he's um, revered by most fan bases. It's, I, I it's <laughs> the most bizarre thing. <laughs> he hated uh, getting traded, too. He hate, yeah. Or, uh, yeah, he hated it. Hmm. That was blues uh, have signed defenseman uh, Theo Epstein. I'm sorry, Theo Lindstein uh, to a three year entry level contract. He was drafted by the blues in the first round, number 29 overall in last year's draft. He's 19 has appeared in nine, uh, 49 games with Brinus IF in. Oh God, Bill, help me out the here. How do you say that? Asvenskin in uh, Sweden this season, posting 15 points, which is four goals and 11 assists and a plus 13 rating. Earlier this season, the Swedish natives starred at the 2024 Under-20 World Junior Championships, leading all tournament defensemen with six assists and eight points overall. He helped Team Sweden the silver medal and earn a nomination to the tournament all-star team. If you remember back uh, just a couple months ago when this uh, tournament happened, he was one of the names we heard blues prospects that had a great tournament. One of the many actually that had a great tournament. So it uh, should be exciting to see this kid. Uh, you know, he's a defenseman. I wouldn't expect to see him over here next year. Maybe the year. Well, actually, I guess maybe he will be over here next year. Um, and he would not have to go to juniors at his age. And and because he's playing overseas. Uh, but I think you would see him in the AHL. I don't think we'll see him in the NHL next year. How big yeah. would it be to have a, a really good, young defenseman in the system. I mean, th- what this team needs. I mean, just yeah. God. Right. Haven't, haven't really had one since uh, Alex Petrangelo, right? Haven't had one since Jonas Yunland. <laughs> I was hoping, there's <laughs> the name. I was hoping Prunovich might be that kind guy. of that guy, you know, the yeah. puck mover quarterback, uh, offensive minded guy, but I don't, I mean, he's all it, right, but he's, he's not got the opportunity for all of it. He's still, yeah, his development got set back by all the fucking injuries. Yeah, he he is a top tier. Uh, will be, I think, as long as he stays healthy, a top tier quarterback for a power play in the NHL. I mean, look what he did his uh, his rookie year um, in that series against Colorado. He 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 absolutely led that power play, and then <clears throat> yeah, hurt he had to. first preseason game the following year, and that was it. Yeah. No, I, I I mean I'm 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 not down on him. I'm just I think a lot of people are. Um but uh I'm not so right. much. Like he hasn't gotten a ton of playing time yet. Right. Not probably what he would deserve if he was if he had stayed healthy. So um, right. the so the last so Petrangelo was the last bona fide guy. Then after after he's Petrangelo, a suitor. He, <laughs> <laughs> that's a call back to last week, right? <laughs> to, to the intro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's got prospects. He's, he's a, a suitor. suitor. <laughs> uh, but um, 
who was it? Um, the the guy that we flipped to Ottawa to get the Tarasenko pick, David Rudbland. 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 Yeah. Right. yeah. So we had uh, we had drafted um, Johnson, Petrangelo, and at that point, Petro was going to be the guy. We had Chad and Kirk still in the system, so that gave us the opportunity to trade Rudbland. And I think he got what like uh, twelve games with Arizona. Oh, he played with Chicago, I think, for a short period. Yeah. Arizona, so, he was all over. And then, yeah, he only played maybe 15 games in the yeah. NHL. Unless, you, I guess my point that I was going to try to make is that unless you're drafting top five with the defenseman, it's, and even then, it's it's a crapshoot. I mean, look, Eric Johnson's still around, but. Zach Bogosian. Right. Yep. Bogosian went one spot ahead of Petro. Yep. Which is crazy. Thank you, yep. Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, I mean, well, problem was Atlanta was like, oh, this kid's good. Let's bring him up right away. And it's just like, no, that's not how it works with defensemen. Right. Give Drew Doughty. Time to, right. Yeah. Doughty was the only guy that was ready to make that jump. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's they, rare they, with defensemen that happens. They develop later usually, and they they peak later. Like People will be down on defense and return in 30. I think 30 is like right now defense's wheelhouse as far as uh, yep. their peak, uh, their, their, uh, you know, their prime. Right. It's crazy to think people are, you know, it, you've heard whispers of Colton Pareko is, you know, he's 31 now. He's yeah. his prime. Someone said he's on the wrong side of 30. I'm like, come yeah. on. <laughs> That's Jesus Christ. Uh, Disagree. Yeah. Forwards. I can, I can see that argument. That's not different. Yeah. Been. Not yeah, I, I, I think even goalies. I I would say because goalies take a while to develop too. I mean, you look at uh, uh guy, look at I mean, obviously, the, well, the most the most crazy example was Tim Thomas, right? Like he was uh, a nobody until he was in his thirties. Yeah, that was Craig a national Anderson guy. Was another one. That was a national guy that said the that Pricka was on the wrong side of thirty. I think, I think it was a national guy. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible, stupid, dumb, bitch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Blues. Uh, so the, after the Blues' four-three loss to Colorado at home uh, last Tuesday, the Blues got back on track with a five-two win over Ottawa Thursday night. Uh, this was uh, Zach Dean made his NHL debut, so we got his rookie lap. Uh, played eight forty-one on the ice for the Blues. Um, what I always try to say with these kind of, especially defensemen, but forwards too really if you're not like a Connor Bedard um I don't really want to notice you that much in your first game because typically that would be a negative thing I hardly noticed him out there I saw him out there a couple times and I was like oh there's Dean um yeah, but you know played a played a nice quiet game yeah no I agree and I I guess that is a good thing if, if you did notice him then you'd probably be looking at turnovers and Yep. Uh, missed assignments and stuff like that. So, was, you know, or losing pucks in corners, something like that. And yeah. I don't feel or like I noticed that at all. With bad him, pass so. across the middle. Boy, right. you, well, you, you, you want to get benched as a, as a, uh, as a kid and then she'll make a bad cr- pass, pass across the middle. gets intercepted Yep, <laughs> in your own yeah. zone. Or, but if you're a veteran, you can do it all you want. Oh yeah, sure. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Yep. Bushnevich, for I, example. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Or Justin Falk or, Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. No, that's, that's, that's a great point. Um, you know, I, I actually think that Bolduc is still um, after toe picking um, in uh, was, was that the Colorado game uh, where he toe picked and there was the turnover and they scored. Um, I think he's still paying the price in the, you know, to the coaching staff, not getting as much. Um, yeah. So uh, I, well, uh, lots of things to talk about with this game. We, we're not going to go in too depth, but uh, again, Jake uh, Neighbors, I thought, had a really nice game. Two goals in this one. Uh, Jordan Cairo, a goal and two assists. Brandon Saad, a goal and an assist. Saad has been playing his best hockey, I think, down the stretch. We're going to talk about him plenty in this game. Uh, but I think the, pers- the person we mostly need to talk about, Joel Hofer, 37 saves on 39 shots. Thought he played very well. I thought Anton Forsberg had a decent game, too, in, in goal for Ottawa, but uh, uh, sends interim coach Jacques Martin. Yes, that Jacques Martin, I believe he's 147 years old. Um, he said, quote, I think he, talking about Hofer, 
was the difference in the hockey game. There's no doubt when you look at the number of chances we had, I think it was 22 to 12 in our favor. Yeah, there was multiple great saves by Joel Hofer. And I saw, um, I finally, this is the first time I've been looking for it all year. And maybe I'm just looking in the wrong places. I've been looking for somebody nationally to say, why are we not talking about Joel Hofer as a Calder Trophy candidate? I was just going to mention that. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I mean, the kid is, is putting out great numbers. His numbers are matching Bennington's, and he's playing great. Like He's he, up there with the, them, some of the they're better They're putting him in, yeah. in these bi- – I mean, yes, it's Ottawa, but this is a big game. It's late in the year. You need wins right now, and you can trust to roll out your rookie goalie and he's going to put out his best effort, and that's what he's doing right now. I just love the way he's playing. Yeah, I mean, we we talked early on in the season about some of the questionable decisions, like you know why why is that that West Coast swing? Why is he getting the first game and not Bennington? And you know what? Just there was some weird sequencing. But as the seasons rolled along, and we've talked about it on on you know many episodes of the show this year, he's been used more as a one B than a two. And he's he's earned it, right? It, it there were a few minor growing pains, um, had a couple of not great games, but now, you know, if Bennington went down injured, I'm not panicking, right? It's you know, do I want Bennington in there if we somehow make it into the playoffs? Yes, but man, I'd also really like to see what Joel Hofer can do. Shades of shades of uh, Huso. I mean, as far as like the vibe. Like when Huso had his nice run, uh, when Bennington yeah, was not but, but playing well, but it took Huso so long to get there. Yeah, right? it did. Benning, Bennington, and, like, and then Huso fell off too. Right. So right. late in the season, and in the playoffs, and then in Detroit, he has not been very good. So. Right. And and yeah, that's. I mean, that that kind of makes Doug Armstrong look like he finally made a you know, a second smart move about a goalie. There were a lot of people that wanted to move on from Bennington and keep Huso that year. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Well, I, I was pretty close. Yeah. Um, I wanted, yeah. I wanted to keep both. I, I didn't, I, I wanted, I wanted them to resign Huso. Yeah. But that's, that's where I was. And, I think and we're make... seeing why they moved on from Huso right now. This is yeah. why they knew yeah. this was coming. They they made the right call and goal for the first time, right? Like get rid of Huso, let Hofer get his chance, well, and that's exactly right. what's happening. And and, and uh, uh, signing Bennington to a longer contract, I think, was the right move. I agree. For yeah, the first time ever, right? They've signed a goalie to a long term contract that they should have, I guess. So, uh, light sound geometry is laughing at me. Apparently, it says LOL Ponder Calder equals Bedard. First of all, I'm not saying Hofer wins the Calder. I would like to see him in the discussion. Right. I think yeah, that right. is a important piece for a young rookie to get the confidence he needs. Second of all, I think Brock Faber and the Minnesota mm-hmm. Wild would like to have a conversation with yeah. you. Light sound geometry. Exactly. That kid yeah. is fucking incredible, and yeah. he's yeah. been everything Minnesota needs as a defenseman. Right. I, you know, I, I think if, to Bedard's detriment, right. The, I think there were people who believed that he could single handedly put that team on his back in his rookie year to make the playoffs. And those kinds of expectations, especially after getting the broken jaw, right. That's they, yeah. they've just weighed too heavily. And Faber is having an insanely good. Like what rookie comes into this league and leads the team in ice time every night? He and and does it with positive possession play, right? Yeah. He's not a stay-at-home defenseman. I mean, we'll talk about the goal that he scored to tie the game, right? He he has great instincts, pinches, and contributes. Yeah, He's, and it's on geometry. I was just gonna say similar he says his nerd numbers are insane yeah his analytic numbers and again this is where i think analytics comes into play i think it it helps you determine is this guy what i'm actually seeing and i think with analytics it's showing he is fucking great for minnesota he's putting up i mean he's leading the play he's breaking up plays he's he's starting the offense you know bill he scored a big goal against st louis yeah but that stuff is is not doesn't a lot of that stuff doesn't show up in box scores and it's not, that's not the sexy stuff. You know, but ours almost a point of game guy. Right. So I know that that's, that's what's going to win him the Calder. Right. So, but I would but love I agree, to but I agree with you. I, I agree with you that there's intangibles that never get the credit that they deserve. 
uh, in in voting for awards, and also and when you're fucking looking at analytics, so many intangibles that they don't factor in. So, which we've talked about so much. Yep, I would love yeah. to see a Calder voting of it'll probably be Bedard, Faber, and Hofer. Like, I would mm-hmm. love to see Hofer in that discussion. Yeah, I'd love to see him in the discussion. I don't think there's any way. He could he could play every game the rest of the season, not give up a goal, and he'd still come in second at best. Right. I think it'll be the same as when Bennington was a rookie. Um, the reason Bennington didn't get it, they said, is because he, he came didn't, in too late. He came in too late in the year. And so they gave it to the guy who was there you know all year, even That's- though Pedersen really didn't show up the second half of the year. Right. That's yeah, that's uh, bullshit. No. Because I agree, it shouldn't matter if he came in uh, in January or not. He put this team on his back, and he he carried them to a to near the top of the conference uh, by the end of the season when they were last. And then you know the rest. I mean, the cup yep. champion. You're not supposed to factor in playoffs though. But still, I don't care. Right. That he was. Well, I mean, just Jordan Bennington alone. Jordan Bennington that season was the most valuable player in the NHL. Oh, he didn't win the award. Right. I think he should have been in the in talks not, for not even MVP. question. It's not even a question that he yeah. was the most and, viable player, MVP and Con Smythe. Yep, yep, agree. Yeah. You know what? I if he had if they hadn't scored that goal on him late in the game seven, mm-hmm. that's a tie. Who? It's a toss up between him right. and O'Reilly. It's toss up. Right. Yeah. Right. That I think the emotional edge goes to him for pitching the shutout in a game seven. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the yeah. stuff of legend. And, and that shot to beat him unworldly shot that thing yeah. was i mean no goalie stopping that it was it was bar down through Where's traffic like, right yeah it was bar down through yep. traffic yeah it was that was fantastic shot yep well next game uh talking about jordan biddington he takes the net back uh the blues beat the minnesota wild five to four in ot saturday night uh there was five lead changes in this game it was a very back and forth seesaw battle jordan biddington 30 uh oh God damn it, Bill. I'm so sorry. We will get back to this game. I think this is where we need to start inserting our save of the week right with the game we're talking about. So we are going to jump into our save of the week with Bill Day at 1350 of the first period against Ottawa. Joel Hofer makes a huge save on Jacob Chikrin. Uh, Take her away, Bill. All right. Uh, is the screen large enough? Do I need to make it bigger? Is you can make that it bigger? Work? You want you want me to make it bigger? You want me to make, make it, it bigger, bigger, baby? Let's see. All right. Let's see it bigger. Go big All or right. go home. I love it bigger. Oh wait, wrong wrong screen. God damn it! Bottom third third from the right on the bottom. The little arrows pointing the opposite way. I know what it is. There you go. There you go, sweetheart. But but I also need my script. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're ruining it for me. <laughs> Let the him beauty of thing. a live show here. Yes. Let him do his the thing. Beauty, the beauty of this Leave whole thing. Bill alone. <laughs> I am going to play it from where it is here. That's All perfect. right. So, so save of the week, as Jeff mentioned, goes to Joel Hofer in the Ottawa game. We're going to watch this come through the first time. Um, and, you know, to borrow a phrase from Kurt, you know, at first glance, this whole thing looks like a bunch of monkey, monkeys trying to fuck a football. Right. Just pucks flopping everywhere. You know, what's the goalie doing? But let's let's take another look at this. Look at this insanely great pass. First, oh, yeah. yeah, Brady yeah. Kachuk yeah. with that sweet pass. Then Chikrin scoop shot gets pops the rebound up in the air. Like, how do you how do you not skate past that and, and actually get that? And then Kachuk, <laughs> Kachuk gets position on Pareko while the puck's in the air and ankles himself so that he can knock the puck back across. And look, Letty does a flyby, but who doesn't? Chikrin. Chikrin's right there, snipes it back at the net. But the most athletic play of all here, Joel Hofer. Watch right here on the slow-mo. He picks up Brady Kachuk's stick and sees it go the other way. Barrel rolls back around, throws the pads up, gets them in front of the puck, keeps it out of the net. This this was an insanely talented play by three elite athletes culminating with the save of the week from Joel Hofer. I mean, God, it. Every time I, I do one of these breakdowns, I'm like, 
oh my god my uh, like i just tore three abs watching what he just did <laughs> it, it's it's insane like I, and when you get back to that the overhead view where just watch his face watch his eyes are on it and he's he's actually i think following kachuk's stick he's not following the puck he saw what where kachuk's stick went and then does the barrel roll to get himself in position just insanely talented play right here from three yeah. great players. Joel Hofer, Dude. man, I love that guy. <laughs> I was amazed at that pass from, from Kachuk because any, any other player in the world is just like, I just need to try and chop this into the net. I don't care where my angle's at. He knew where chicken was. He put it right on his tape and he knocked it out of the air. Like what I, what I so love impressive. What I love about, this sequence uh, and, and Hofer's play here is that uh, I love uh, the all hands on deck uh, uh, goal mouth scrambles. You know, it's chaos. You really see what goalies are made of uh, when they've got to scramble around and it's no longer, okay. You know, uh, whether, you know, the, the uh, opponent is passing the fuck around. You're trying to look through screens, trying to keep your angle, trying to keep your, 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 your position from the post where you are. And it's, it's none of that. There's no, it's all reaction. It's all athleticism. It's just a quickness from side to side. It's just, you know, like how, how, how much can he bend his arm, bend his spine, you know, to make this save and flop around. It's just, you know, and, and to right. stay within himself and right. slide out of the goal. Right. right? The, the control, right? Yes. Like right. I, I can make that spin, but I'm probably going to like barrel roll to the corner <laughs> or something. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, that, yeah. That's where you see what, that's where you see what goalers are made of. Those, those, uh, those uh, chaotic scrambles in front where they, 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 they keep track of the puck and they're, they're just trying to play as big as possible and take away as much as possible uh, wherever that puck's bouncing around to. So it's, yeah. it's just, that's fun to watch. Yeah, yep. and, and and I'll add too that uh, you mentioned the vision, Bill. Like the fact that he doesn't take his eye. I mean, he, I, I I think you're right. I think he does take his eye off the puck, but he's still like, okay, how are the players reacting around me? And he notices that Kachuk whipped his stick across, and it's like, oh, okay, the and you see his head turn, and it's like, oh, okay, I need to look this direction because the puck's coming from this way now. Like just the wherewithal to be there for that. I mean, I play hockey all the time. I don't think I can f- track the puck that, that, that that's crazy. Yeah. No, to, to this moment, my, my neck is like in spasm, <laughs> just thinking what it takes physically to do what Hofer did in that sequence. And yeah, I mean that, that they're, Going back through the games and picking which save it was, oh God, this was so. I mean, he had really, really good saves uh, throughout this game, but this was by far the best save of the best goaltending performance of the week. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, piggyback on Light Sound Jamin, who's coming here. Love, love seeing neighbors diving to block the shot. Yeah, he comes sliding in to try and help out there. It's just a uh, fantastic effort, which is what you see on a nightly basis from him. Uh, trying just trying to do what, whatever he can on the back check to uh, to help out. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. I just love it. Jake Neighbors has thrust himself into one of my top three favorite players right now. Yeah. I mean, he's just been incredible for sure. And you know that the the unfortunate part about that sequence to me was Nick Letty. Like, what the fuck is he <laughs> yes. doing? He 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 thought he was following Chickren to the corner, and Chickren posted up and took the pass. And Letty's like, oh, wait, there's a play behind me. I and, and neighbors and Shen are both going down in like pad save style to try to, to get something on it. Uh, I'm not, I, I know I've said on the show, I'm not a Letty don't, fan. If they if that's on him a thousand games, don't I know we're getting show. ready to talk good about him. And I will add, I think skating offensively, he's great. But God, defensively, he is a fucking train wreck. He never has his guy. We saw a backdoor play. I think it's in this upcoming game, right? Um, mm-hmm. Where uh, uh, I don't remember who it was, but somebody scored on him and Pareko. Pareko was trying to play the pass, and Letty wasn't doing anything. He was just standing there. I just defensively, he's a train wreck. I, yeah. I'm not a Nick Letty fan. He he and Justin Falk are are liabilities right now yes. on the defensive yes. side of things. 
St. Paul uh, the, had a bad play in this game too that led to a goal. Money Puck uh, had the Blues, uh, the, the Senators, winning this game seventy four point two percent of the time uh, in a thousand game simulations. So. Yeah, I, I ran it a couple times while I was watching, or after the game was over, and I was watching another game. And yeah, every time it was Ottawa on top, at mm-hmm. least by sixty five percent. Yeah, yeah, they it's they yeah, they they came to play that night. But yeah, Joel Joel Hofer like delivered like that in yep. that you know to set the stage for for the the you know the big two games like that's the game you can't lose they entrusted it to him yes. and he was fucking lights out. Yep, agree. Well, we will officially move on to the Minnesota game. Thank you, Bill. Always uh, an, an insightful and exciting. Uh, conversation with Save of the Week. I'm so happy we implemented that. We owe everything to Ken Morris, but you get nothing, Ken Morris, <laughs> for coming up with that idea. <laughs> uh, Blues beat Minnesota 5-4 in overtime Saturday night. Uh, five lead changes in this game, as I already said. Nick Letty <laughs> plays in his 1,000th NHL game. He is only, and which this was kind of surprising to me, he's only the 14th player to be wearing a Blues jersey while playing in his 1,000th game. With all the players the Blues have gotten later in their careers, I was surprised to see they've only had 14 suit up for 1,000 in a Blues jersey. So, uh, And he did get an assist in this game. So a memorable one definitely for Nick Letty. Uh, Neighbors uh, scored a big goal, I thought, in this game. Again, Jake Neighbors, I, we can't speak highly enough of him. Uh, I thought, so he scored the first goal of this game. I loved it. Uh, as a two on one with Thomas, but we mentioned him earlier. Brock Faber blocked the pass, but Shen trailed the play. Uh, he got it on net. Flurry made a nice save, but neighbors uh, had to contort his body and wrap it around Faber uh, to get the rebound on his backhand as he's diving and falling. Uh, he does so, and he got a quick shot on net. I mean, you know, that wasn't just a I'm going to poke it at the net and hope it just sneaks through the goalie. It it was a laser on the backhand, and it went under Flurry. Uh, he couldn't react fast enough, and just a big goal in a big game. I think at this point, you guys will probably agree, I think this at this point is the biggest game of the season. We'll talk about the next game. I think that overtakes it, but at this point, you had to win this game against Minnesota, so to go on the board first was massive for the Blues. Yeah, they were the Blues were up on Minnesota by a point. Is that right, going into this game? I believe Sounds so. right. Yeah. I believe that's right. And you, you can't. You can't, I mean, almost every game from this point forward, well, well, Ottawa actually, it was a must-win game. For this, You can't lose to Ottawa, like we talked about. And Minnesota, you're right there with them neck and neck. You can't lose to them. Um, and you had a big game coming up next, right, against Vegas. So you had to, you wanted to secure this win. So this was a, this was a massive game. And uh, Money Puck didn't like the Blues in this game, but we can get to that at the end. <laughs> yeah. So Jake Neighbors is not the only one uh, who scored a big goal. Jordan Cairo comes up big, scores a hat trick in this game. Uh, and uh, Pavel Buchnevich also has th- adds three assists in this game. The thing I liked about Cairo, and, and we've talked good, bad, neutral about him all year. Um, he was focused in this game. I felt like his bullshit with unable to receive good passes unable to control the puck, unable to to win puck battles in the corners. Like his inability with the stick has been so prevalent this season. This was Jordan Cairo of two years ago that yeah. we saw in this yeah. game. He was receiving passes. He was making plays. And most importantly, he was firing the puck. I think that is where his best attribute is. Get the puck on net. Shoot it. Don't make the extra move. Shoot. Don't deke. Shoot. He, he, he did played, that this game. He played with a purpose in this game. Mm-hmm. And and it got and he got uh better as the game went on. You know, his second period, third period especially. I mean, he was uh, he had jump. Um he had determination when he was skating with the puck. He just he did, I mean, it, it, stuff that doesn't show up in the box score at all. But just watching him and his determination on the ice was so much more obvious mm-hmm. in this game. Uh, and you were just you're just like, yes, he's got the killer instinct. He's got the he eye of the tiger. Control. He's got the eye of the tiger in this game, and you yeah. can see it. Yeah, that, and that that's you know we could talk about analytics all to death, and we do, and and that shit doesn't show up. 
ever. Uh, d- determination of a player on the ice. And uh, and he he made shit happen. And I don't know where that Kairou is on most nights. I don't know why. I, now, I, I'm not expecting the guy to put up a hat trick every night. That's ridiculous. But, you know, or to even play with that energy every single shift. That's, you'd be, he'd be dead. But, you know, bring that at some point every game. You know, bring that for half a period or one period of game when it when it comes down to it. Let's see it. That we haven't seen this more than a handful of games all season. No, I I, um, I I will just add real quick to your point. Um, and I'm not trying to make a comparison to Alex Ovechkin here, but if you watch Ovechkin in his prime, that's what he would do. He would pick his moments to just be like, "This is where I'm going to go balls to the wall and I'm going to score a fucking goal." Like you could see it when he would take the ice for his next shift. That's what we need to see in Kairou more often. We saw it in this game. He stepped on the ice at certain points, and you could just see the drive that he had and the skating. I mean, again, he's got lightning speed, and we saw it in this game. He's firing up the middle. He's firing up the boards. He's getting shots on net. He was determined to fucking score goals in this game. And and it, it goes back to the Doug Armstrong quote from last year. I think it's a foregone conclusion when he said the thing about too many guys are worried about their YouTube highlights. Like, this was not a game Jordan Cairo was worried about his YouTube highlights. He was worried about winning the fucking game, and that's what you want to see. Yeah, no, he was, like, go back to the Ottawa game. You know, we, we talked so much about Hofer. Cairo was great in the Ottawa game goal to assists, right? Set up the first two goals. Great pass from behind the net to Pareko for the, the second goal. Um, but he started, to me, he played the Ottawa game with a purpose. And then he gets into this game and, you know, it. he, he was just, yeah, he was dialed in and that we don't see that enough from him. I will say, however, that, you know, um, and and I have to give a shout out to to Mark Andre Fleury for the Jill Malosh tribute with uh, the the Wild wearing their uh, their North Stars tribute jerseys. Um, that the first time I saw that helmet, I'm like, oh my god, this takes me back to my youth. Uh-huh. Jill Malosh, that was his helmet. Um, but he made a Jill Malosh like '80s goalie effort on Kairou's second goal. The the shot from way out high. That shouldn't go in. Yeah. But Kairou shot the puck. Yeah. Right? And he's got a hard shot. And how many goals have we seen Ovechkin score? Again, hate to make the comparison, but like how many times have we seen Ovechkin score like that should not have gone in the net? Well, it's because he shoots 20 times a game. They're going to go in. He's also, it's also a one timer from the near boards where the goal is sliding across. We, we, it's, it's not hard to understand the concept of when you get a goalie moving, holes open up. And you know, if he if he slides across and gets set, that uh, takes a lot of uh, a lot of holes away for a shooter. You one time it, and, and the puck is coming at the goalie and at him while he's still moving. There's all kinds of holes, and that's Ovechkin made a living has made a living doing that. He's got a hard, accurate one timer from you know 20 feet out, which is fantastic. These jerseys we, t- we talked about, so many people want the Wild to go to these colors permanently. I'm one of them. I love these colors. Same thing with the blues and their heritage colors. Mm-hmm. Use them every game. You've got a home. You've gotten a way. Use them. Give the fans what they want. You know, Minnesota should be using these these jerseys every game. If next, Minnesota next switches those jerseys full time, Subway has to be their jersey sponsor. <laughs> right? Well, 100%. <laughs> Absolutely have to be. Yeah. I don't. I I know that you know the franchise is in Dallas now, but who cares? This but this they this dropped is... the colors before they left, right? They they were Dallas, um, the Dallas black and black, green and gold. Um, yeah. It's a different gold, right? And and that uh, the stars had adopted that before they left Minnesota, and that was a shame. Fuck the guns. <laughs> uh, Matt Harris, uh, what was that again? Oh, go ahead. I'll pull it back uh, up. I was I, I was reading. Uh, I've heard that the team, Matt Harris says, I've heard that the team would regularly listen to the podcast for advice, at least until allegations said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, gotcha. we got to stop with those allegations, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you just get the fans what they want with these jerseys. I mean, some of these, 
jerseys that the teams have, they they're the, the best jerseys. They're they only wear a handful of times a year, and it's crime. I don't understand it. I, I, maybe if they sell more that way, fuck that. If you get the, it, but it's not it, even it's, close. Well, which jersey is the better jersey? Use your best jerseys as your everyday jerseys. I'm all I'm on the opinion mm-hmm. that teams I love was it Cleveland or uh, Denver. One of the NBA teams is using like eight different jerseys this season. I'm all for that. I say just fucking mix it up, wear different jerseys every game. I don't give a shit. The more, the better. You're going to sell more. Fans love it. Why not? I'm all for it. If the Blues went to Heritage as a number one, I'd want to see that almost every game. At least for at least for a number of years until I'm used to it. I, I that's that's. It, it, I mean, I don't. It, it's it's just such a it, it pops, and they use this darker blue, which is fine for their normal jerseys, but it's not near as 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 electric on the ice as their heritage blues are. And the same thing with the uh, Minnesota jerseys, same exact thing. I, I like I like both teams' jerseys, all of them they use. So I'm not gonna get heated about this, but I do agree with you. I do think the Heritage jerseys are a little nicer. You know what's interesting, too, is that Minnesota's regular jerseys, they're darker and more muted. They're not as vibrant, you know, as, as these are. Like the Blues, their their Heritage is more vibrant. I don't know why they, they think that the um, their regular tradition, their regular everyday jersey has to be more muted and, and dulled down. Why can't it be the electric one that they're, that they trot out there that people love winning unlimited wanting to start an argument apparently and i'm all for it baby i'm with you during uh, sure. pride jersey should be worn in games 100 percent. absolutely why not that'd be so cool why not the, the, you see it you see baseball they have like on fourth of july they have stars and stripes jersey logo like their logos of stars and stripes on the the crest and stuff uh hockey, they do all kinds of stuff like that hockey fights cancer right they they wear them only for warm-ups no Wear them for the game. Yeah, yeah. dude. Meaningful. I've I've always said that. Like, because those are beautiful. The the purple. Like every team has like the same kind of design for the hockey fights cancer. Yeah. Wear them in the game. Why not have the other team wear their whites? Why not? <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, and it feels weird. Or have both teams wear them. Wear like a home and an away. Like the other team wears a white with like purple stripes down the the sleeves. I don't know. I think that would be cool. Yeah. I well the, with the pride thing, you're gonna get pushback from yeah for other reasons right from people which is but a shame. i'm with you it's a shame yep i think we're all with you on that that would be really cool because i do love the pride jerseys yeah some of them are really cool i mean it's like yeah oh, this, that's, that's just neat that's just cool oh my wife got one of uh cities from last year the uh yeah. uh city pride jersey that that thing was beautiful love it uh all right so brandon sod again we mentioned him earlier we're gonna mention him again and we'll mention him again later uh he scores the ot winner uh well, first thing i want to comment on how about uh casperi kapanen getting some love and ot um obviously banister loved what he saw in the game and uh put kapanen out there with sod and uh was it falk yeah falk. Yep. uh and and I'll I'll call out too, you know, obviously Sod skated the puck up the ice, made a nice play, split the D, slid it under Flurry's uh pads. But uh Jordan Bennington making the right play here. Um the Blues yeah. kind mm. of fumbled the puck and it was kind of annoying. Um Falk kind of lost uh, lost control of it and there was a little bit of a scramble in front, and then Bennington or no, he slid it back to Bennington. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. And I'm thinking of another goal. But um, yeah, slid it back to Bennington. I'm thinking about uh, Vegas's OT winner, which we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, he slid it back to Bennington, and Bennington had the state of mind, even though the guy was coming right at him and was right in his grill. Slid it over to Falk. Falk finds Sod. Sod skates it up. Just a very mindful play by Bennington to keep the play moving and kind of catch Minnesota off guard. And Sod puts it in the net. Blues win five four. And who is it? The Minnesota player does a flyby of uh, of Bennington if he stops at the mm-hmm. doorstep. Yeah, there's, it was there's Boldy. A, yeah, there's a face-off. Yeah, he, right. he, doesn't, he doesn't get the puck to, to fall. Yeah. So. Boldy does the flyby, and yeah. then Boldy winds up being the guy who's back. And for whatever reason, um, you know, as the Blues enter the zone on the right side, he stayed way off to the left instead of he pinching did. off the center. And yeah. he gave yeah. up the lane. 
And, you know, it, that one of my favorite things about the game was the synchronicity of the broken sticks across the crossbar yeah. <laughs> between Boldy and Flurry. That was so fucking fun to watch. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> my daughter pointed that out. She's ah, the goalie smashed the stick over the goal. I'm like, yeah, the yeah, the uh, Boldy did too, and uh, both yep. sticks shatter. It's great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Boldy. That that's a learning. God. Yeah, just like yeah. that. <laughs> it's not their money. Oh, yeah. um, it is. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Players buy their own sticks. Yeah, they do. Really? Players buy, players buy their own sticks. Last I heard, a few years ago, I yeah. had. I've heard the opposite. I've I've heard players buy their own sticks. Huh. Well, they make millions of dollars, so it's not That's, a big deal to them. Sounds like a summer show topic, possibly. Yeah. Um, no, I, and I think that's a learning experience for Boldy. I think he came yeah. off the ice. Coach pulled him probably aside and said, "What the hell were you doing there, son?" So you just I think cost that us is... playoffs, you prick. Oh. Yeah, right. You're oh, sitting. I just looked it up. It says, uh, "Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong." Uh, the question of whether NHL players purchase their own sticks is an interesting inquiry, and the aspects related to the team partnerships and player preferences provide insight into this. And unlike what would appear to be the case, NHL players do not pay for sticks. They are That's the responsibility of the team. That's not what I heard, though. Okay. You should have read wow. that. That The way that was written, like that needed an English accent. It sounded it sounded like it was AI written, though, too. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. It, it does. Possibly. Okay. And yeah, well, NHL, yeah, the red NHL Reddit does say that they do pay for sticks. That's okay. All right. No, well, I'm not sure where I heard Kurt, that. Then. Kurt I'm was wrong. wrong. Jeff was right. Let's yep. just uh, I am remember wrong. that. Yep. Uh, it can happen. It can happen to you. <laughs> um, I, I I did hear it somewhere though, a couple different times. So I'm not. Oh, I believe you. Yeah. But yeah, I, I've working in the industry as long as I did for um, Total Hockey and X Hockey <sighs> products. We did always hear that players did. Uh, they did not buy their own jer- or their own sticks or some Which of them do sense. buy their own uh, undergarments um, like Brandon Saad. He has that. Uh, the, the what's that called? The war road. The oh, oh, she's a uh, oh, line of a uh, neck. I'm guard. pretty sure he did buy that. So that's the kind of thing they do by themselves. Bill, I saw you grab a stick. What do you got there? Yeah. So this this uh, stupid boom. <laughs> microphone it's a, it's a boat or is what it it's is a boat or it is <laughs> um i'm pretty sure john gillies paid for this and then the blues made 100 percent profit when i bought it off of them <laughs> but yeah this is john gillies 32 nice. right right there on nice. the shaft very yeah. nice he had one great game for the blues <laughs> we had believe against anaheim yeah that sounds about was right. that that game yep uh, so the Blues, now we mentioned Minnesota being the biggest game of the year. Well, now it is the Vegas Golden Knights Monday night, biggest game of the year. No question in anyone's mind, but unfortunately they did lose this one, uh, excuse me, two to one in overtime. Uh, there was a pregame ceremony for Nick Letty, uh, for his 1000th game since this was the first home game. So this was his thousandth and first NHL game. Uh, he did receive the the typical silver stick. Uh, he got the jersey. Um, God, McKinnis gave him something. Was that the jersey? I don't remember. They, he got a bunch of cool shit. McKinnis uh, gave him the stick. Armstrong gave him the jersey. That's right. And then he got the watch from the players. That's right. Yeah. The finger of the yep. stick. He did McKinnis some gloves. White keeper of the cup gloves. Because that silver stick, his fingerprints all over it. Like, ah, oh, yeah. Some white gloves. Yeah, I've seen that. I've actually seen that. Um, I've seen one of those sticks. I can't remember whose it was. It might have been Mike Madano's. Um, and yeah, and you could see fingerprints on the very top of it. And it's like, oh, don't handle that without gloves on. What are you I doing? Know. It's on a TV. The all the lights are shining. It's all reflective. It's gonna it's gonna show big time on TV. And it did. Yep. Yep. Uh, so uh, the lot lot happened in this game. This is the game that Sunquist got hurt. Um, he, uh, got hurt at nine 50 of the second period. Uh, he was hit in the corner by Braden McNabb. Um, well, Bannister provided no update, but obviously we got an update today. Uh, Cairo got an assist, giving him four goals, three points. I'm sorry, four goals, three assists, seven points during a seven game point streak. Um, I thought, again, we talked about it already a little bit. Goaltending in this game, Jordan Bennington, I thought played a good game, uh, 33 of 34 in this one. 
it's just Logan Thompson was that much better. Uh, mm-hmm. Logan Thompson was great. Uh, he had 30, he, what he made 31 saves on 32 shots. Um, and just uh, one of the saves he made was uh, in, early in the third period. Kevin Hayes had a breakaway, real nice puck strip. I thought at the, uh, at the point clear breakaway, which it kind of has to be if you're Kevin Hayes and skate as fast as he does. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, he he pulled the move. I mean, just a beautiful one of those kind of the Forsberg where you come in one way and then you come back the other way with one hand and try to poke it in. Thompson read it perfectly and uh, did the splits and and uh, kept the puck out. So again, just a great goaltending performance from Logan Thompson and uh, Blues dropped this one mostly, I think, because of him. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure. Logan Thompson was by far like when when I was going back through to pick what uh, save this. Save of the week was my initial thought was Bennington on Eichel in the third, um, in this one, but yeah, you no, know, I, I couldn't give it to Bennington in a game where he was the second best goalie. Logan Thompson from the opening faceoff, first shift of the game, yep. he robbed Oscar Sundquist. Uh, I mean, the guy, oh, yeah. the guy was on fire, oh. and in you know, the the uh, was it was it Rivers that said like very early on, you know, that uh, Aiden Hill's injured, and so you got their backup. You got to take advantage of this. And it's like, you know, Logan Thompson, you know, really, it's he's not. I didn't think backup as a as a yeah you know, a one B. I thought I didn't think Hill has looked pretty good lately. I've no. I've been watching more of Vegas's games lately, and he's allowed some shitty goals. Uh, yeah, uh, I forgot which game it was that. Uh, it was a back and forth game between uh, Vegas and someone they lost because of Hill. He had two softies in the third period. Right. It oh. it's it kind of seems like they've been um, trying to maybe learn from previous years and stick with one guy, and they're sticking with the wrong guy. Based yeah. on Thompson's performance last night, I mean that yeah. that was got that that was uh, you know who played on who played, par with uh, Gophers game against Ottawa. Who played against Nashville? Was it Thompson or was it Hill? no? Uh, Hill's injured, so yeah, he, it was, it was, so it was Thompson again. I didn't think it was Thompson. I thought it was uh, was it the? the that was a back to back game. Was it third string? Yeah, the, because it wasn't Thompson. It was uh, whoever that was because it was a back to back game. And I want to, I, I want to say it was not Thompson. I'm pulling it up right now. Although I've been once wrong in this podcast already. So what's what's two? <laughs> what's one more? Right. I, mean, I will say while you're looking that up, Bill, that uh, against Minnesota, uh, Money Puck had the Blues. Uh, losing that game in their deserted automator. And in this game, they had the Blues uh, winning in this yep. deserted automator. So in the three games that we've talked about, the deserted automator, uh, shocker, is 0 for 3. Yep. So. And and I'll say that I ran this one twice and posted the results here. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I just ran it too. In our outline. I, I got the same, it, same, same 50. thing. 50.7 for the Blues to win and then 53.1 the second time. So and I, just, I yeah. just ran it and I got 52. So, yeah, same yep. thing. Yep. So yeah, it was, I, it, it, it's just <laughs> Yuri Patera. Yeah. Oh, oh that's Patera. right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So and and so the the goal side scores, fantastic play by by uh, uh, Kairu Shen? to get the puck Kairu up to yeah. yeah. That's what I said, Kairu mm-hmm. to get the puck up to uh, uh, Shen, who Shen. nice beautiful cross ice backhand right on Sod's tape, and then. Shovels it in, uh, and Thompson got a piece of it, underside yeah. of his glove. Yeah, yeah. almost got yep. it. Almost. But, uh, that would have been but man, a save of the year candidate, right? I, I mean, that, that was that would have been ridiculous. Oh, especially considering the the game situation, the time mm-hmm. of the game, yeah. and what the game meant. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, right. So I and this game obviously going bonkers, and the Blues damn near won the game in regulation. They had a few more chances uh, right. in the closing minutes. They they were all over Vegas in this third period. Um. And which I didn't think the first two periods were very good by the Blues. They didn't play. Uh, I didn't think they played it very good in the first two periods. They came on in the third, tied it, uh, and then you know, and the Blues in overtime. But that that I thought they could have been better in the first two periods. Yep, I agree. Um, and I I did not like Buchnevich's choice of shot on the penalty shot he had in overtime. Uh, uh, I thought I thought it was telegraphed. I thought it, he let Thompson see where he was going to put the puck because he kind of made a deke and then he like did a little kind of like a half wind up and then shot it like didn't really like it seemed like he was going to fake but then he shot anyway and it just to me think- and Bill you can tell me if I'm wrong like I feel like 
he allowed Thompson to see right where he was going to put that puck. Yeah, he he. I think what he had, what his intention was was to sell upper glove and get Thompson to raise his glove, but he had, he didn't sell it. And Thompson Thompson read it and got that like getting that hand down as quickly as he did. He saw it in in Bushnevich's eyes where he was going to. So play. and that's a situation yep. where Bushnevich is not reading the play in front of him. He is trying to uh, anticipate what's going to happen and shoot it there anyway. And yeah. and that didn't happen. I I thought you know coming in if you're going to do the little fake deke thing uh, like he did. I I don't know why not pulling it back on your backhand mm-hmm. and then trying yeah, to no. flip it. That, that, that was the same thing. That that, that seems like the much better move there. Right. If you're going to try and fake forehand, and I, fake fake. And I a, thought a, he could have. I thought he could have stunned him too if he would have like done the same move where he kind of lifted his stick and then still went to the forehand and went further. I thought that. Mm-hmm. I still think Thompson makes the save there, but I think it's a like better opportunity for you to try and catch him and then get a shot you know, a split second later. I just don't think he read what think, was in front of him. Yeah. No, he, I, I agree with that. He, he put Thompson off balance and if he pushes either side, it's going to be hard for Thompson to recover. I mean, look at, look at the bounce he had to make to, to, you know, hold on to the puck after he caught it. It was a good yeah. save. It was, it was it, a really good save. It, it, was, it was a good save. Yeah, he yes. kept, he kept his glove down. It was, a, he did a great job. Um, I just, yeah, I'm with you. It's like, I bet you if he had it do over again, he's like, nah, that was not a, the best choice. Yeah. For Bushnavis to do. Uh, so the game winner, this was where I kind of got a little pissy with this team. I did not like the way they handled it was Falcon Shen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they were, uh, going with Marsh or so down the ice and they had a chance to steal it from him and turn the other way. But it seemed like Falk and Chen just kind of lost sight of where the puck was. And then Marcia So just followed the play, brought it behind the net, got it to uh hell. Who's the winner? Who scored the winner? Marcia So got the winner. Oh, it was Marcia So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, and then he just had all the time in the world to skate in front and get a good shot on Bennington. Um Bill, I I know, I know we should not listen to anyone on Twitter. I thought this was a in terms of goalie versus shooter. I thought this was a good goal for March or so. I don't think it was a bad goal on Bennington. I saw some people blaming Bennington. What are your thoughts? No, I I mean, you want your goalie to, you know, come back and make the big save after the penalty shot save, right? And this is the first shot that he faced. Um, I thought that, you know, Shen, Shen and Falk, you know, got – yeah, they've, got behind the the net. Right. they've got they've, a they've, they've got a couple they've got the puck and then both of them can't chase him behind and Cairo caught himself too late i thought if Cairo would have just gone to the other side he can cut off marsh so coming out but he thought about trying to swing behind you know, the net and yeah. then you know he got himself in between he was trying to cut off um was it theodore theodore, theodore coming yeah. down the slot and well, you know, if he cuts off Marsha show, he, then the pass goes to Theodore in the slot who's wide open. Yeah. Yeah. But if he doesn't push down to the goal line um, initially and goes to the other side, he cuts him off and the pass isn't there. Right. He can force him wide. But didn't yeah, happen. Yeah. No, no. And to me, I two on one behind the blues goal. You especially three on three. So you've only got one guy out high uh, and, and even Cairo was kind of at the side of the net. So they were all deep. You got to come up with that puck. You can't, if you lose the puck battle, then you're, then you're in trouble for a few seconds until you can get back in front. And they, and they were, and then that's how I lost the game. You, you two on one battle behind the, behind the net. Shen gets pinned between who was the four checker uh, between the night player and the boards. So he's just like, he Shen's almost out of the play. So it's just Falk back there digging, and then it, it's it's scooped up by uh, Marsha Show, who just curls around and scores. I, I didn't like, I didn't like, I, I didn't like the Blues getting outworked behind the goal mm. and lost. No. That. that that's where the game was, was lost for me. It was William Carlson that originally had the puck behind the net. Um, okay. yeah, and then it, and then he slid it over to Marsha so who was open. But see, yeah, I, just, I, it checked out between him and the and the boards, which is not where you want to be. You got you want to be behind yeah. you. Wanna, 
that's it was just well, you mentioned behind the net even before that when when Carlson was trying to carry the puck in they got the puck away from him but he got it back and it just seemed like Falk and Shen just didn't know where the puck was and it was like in that moment you yeah. had just got to get that puck who was that was Shen that was yeah because they yeah they came in and they did I think Falk poked it away Shen grabs it at the logo the digital logo and he's got it and he's got Cairo outside the blue line if he could have given him a quick pass back, it's one on one. But that's that could have been a turn and it's burn the other way. But still, Shen's got the puck on his stick. He's skating into the zone though, and it's like, yeah, you got the puck, you lost the puck, then you got a two and one behind battle behind the goal, and you lose that battle. You deserve to lose the game. I mean, yep. that, you, you lost those two those those two sequences there that uh, that caused you the game. It, it is what it is. Uh, there were tons of chances in this game the Blues had that didn't. Did, did, may not have had to go to overtime, you know, but whatever. I mean, they well, we I'm, talked about Thompson playing. Thompson was the, he was amazing. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. And, the, and but you're you right. Say, we, you could also say the blues should have probably had a couple, a couple more yeah. goals. Right? Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, how many times have we said that on this show? Like how many times are we going to give the goalie kudos and not give the blues some shit and say, you got to find a way to capitalize. Like well, every goalie is going to have a hole eventually. See, I was a forward, so it's always the forward's fault for not scoring. It's never the goalie's doing. Right. <laughs> right. It's like, I should have scored that. My fault. I had the, I had, I had holes to score and I didn't hit them. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and even <laughs> that, the Blues only goal, right? He got a piece of it. Yeah. So, I mean, he, it, it was, the guy was, the guy was dialed in. It, and it was, and like I said, the, the 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 Blues did lose, so the the results sucked. But this was a fun game to watch. Right, Frustrating yeah. in the first two periods because I thought right. the Blues played like I thought they played kind of bad in the first two periods. I didn't like mm-hmm. their puck uh, puck control, the puck possession. Uh, their passing was sloppy. I thought Vegas was taking the Blues for a good chunk of the game. Uh, Blues really came on in the third uh, and and played desperate hockey. And that that if they had played that way. You know, in the second period, at least, it might be a different story. Yeah. If Sunquist scores in the first shift of the game, which uh, he damn near almost did, mm-hmm. uh, who knows what happens. But uh, you know, woulda coulda. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought the, uh, I thought the, the, the Knights withstood the that opening shift and and yeah. kind of you know yeah. the the Blues the Blues uh, settled into their game, didn't play great. Um, the the intensity wasn't great the first yeah, period and a half. Um, I Falk uh, on Dorofiev's goal. I mean, come on, you've got two guys covering the guy in the slot, and he goes to cover the same guy and gives Dorofiev the lane to the net. Yeah, that that is just disgusting defensive defensive yeah. play by Falk. Um, but the Blues found their they you know they found the intensity, and that felt like like. Watching that third period was like this is playoff hockey. Yeah, feels like yes. if this is the only taste we get, God, I want it. It's like here right? come the Blues. I want it all you, season. Yeah. They were they were yeah. all you when the Blues started to come in the third period. Like they're coming and 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 they're they're either gonna the their goal is gonna keep standing on his head and the Blues are gonna shut out or we're, we're scoring some goals. There's not gonna be Vegas isn't really pushing back that much. You know right. this is this is our game to lose. At this point, right, right. and oh. I, th- I thought Cairo was frustrated in the first two periods, and earlier in the season, you know, before this, these last three games, you know, he probably sulks in the third period, but he he pushed that goal. He's he's the guy that started the play. Yep. You know, great backhand pass to Shen, great backhand pass to uh, to Saad. And yeah, that I I was impressed by Kairu showing up in the third period. He he did catch a lot of flack uh, on social media for uh, not following up his previous great game with another good great game uh, in a, the biggest game of the season. Uh, I, I don't he, and and while he did have a very nice play on the Blues goal, I. I was I was he he regressed in this game. He he took a he took a huge step down from the game before, uh, as did most of the team. Almost uh, there were very few Blues players, aside from Bennington, uh, that had a a good first two periods. 
Yeah. They were. They were. I, not good. I thought. Not good. I thought Bennington had a, a for his standard. I thought he had a rough game against Minnesota. Oh yeah. Uh, I thought he really picked yeah. his game up against Vegas. I, I yeah. agree. No, the 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 game against Minnesota felt like two desperate teams just slapping each other in the face back and forth. <laughs> and the Vegas game was two teams that knew what was at stake fighting to the death. Right. Uh what do you guys think of the hit on Brandon Sod by Braden McNabb in the first period? I I loved it. And, it and you mentioned yeah. play yeah. you mentioned playoff hockey. That hit, I was like, and you hear the crowd, the roar of the crowd, and yeah. then you know, Braden Shen instantly steps up and drops the gloves. Which, like, yeah, oh, I, I that's have, what I love right there. I have, I have zero issues with the hit. I mean, you know, sometimes players get hurt on clean plays. That's what this yep. was. It was, it was a, it was a good hard hit. Um, and I have zero issue with Shen dropping the gloves there because I've always said, you know, people say, oh, they're dropping the gloves on a clean hit. No. No, th- to me, if you're if you see your teammate get rocked, you're you're sticking up for your teammate. You're sending a message to the other team saying, "Hey, if you're going to throw your weight around like that, then you're going to have to answer for it this way." You 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 that's a a, a form of pushback. I, I like it. Now you could say, "Well, just play physical right back at him." Okay, I get it. But your player's hurt, so you know. It was a it was a nasty hit. It was clean, but I have no problem with Shen dropping the gloves there just to defend his teammate, saying if you're going to hit the guy that hard, then I'm going to let's fight, let's go. I have no problem with that. Um, and it was a good scrap. I yeah, enjoyed that scrap. Sure. That was a good yeah. one, right? In in Shen's comments after the game, right? He uh, he and McNabb trained together. They're both Saskatchewan boys. They trained together in the off season. They're friends, and that's that's yeah. what you know. That's what happens when you get into this high intensity hockey mm-hmm. and it was, you know, it, it was, it, I, it, it was, it wasn't like, you know, some of the, some of the, you know, early season, Oh, our player got hit. I got to drop the gloves, you know, obligatory kind of thing. This was an emotional response by the captain of this team. Yep. And how many, and, and what would have happened if, if Saad got rocked and no one stepped in, then, Obviously, the fans will be pissed. No one's yep. sticking up for the teammate that for mm-hmm. they got rocked. You have to, I, especially I a guy who's playing as well as Sod is. Yeah, right now. and I hate it when people say, "Oh, I hate it when they drop the gloves after a clean hit." No, nah, I mean not a hit like that. Now a clean hit that doesn't, there's no harm, no foul. That's different. Uh, but yeah, a, a clean hit that d- just rocks your player. I'm like, yeah, oh, you got to You got to stand up for your guy. Right. You got to You're, you're going to throw your weight around like that. You're going to play you know, on the line, on the edge, you know, let's, let's go. Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead, Bill. I was just going to say it, uh, a clean, you know, a, a hard, heavy hit in the corner on a hockey play as opposed to cleaning a guy's clock when he's not looking right. Oh, you know, yeah. watching the puck, whatever in the neutral zone, totally different in this situation. Yep. yep. Well, uh, we are looking at standings. We're standings watching officially now. I mean, we have been now for a couple weeks, but uh, we have uh, 10 games left for the Blues, Predators, and Golden Knights, as well as the Jets in that third spot. But I do not think the the Blues are 14 points back at that third spot in Central. I don't (laughs) think that is something that is even going to – yeah, that's not going to happen. So we are looking at wild cards specifically. The Nashville Predators have the first wild card spot. Again, this is being recorded March 27th, uh, right now at 11.15. Nashville Predators, 72 games uh, played, 10 left, 90 points. Vegas Golden Knights hold the second wild card spot, same amount of games, 86 points. Blues, same amount of games, are just on the outside looking in at 80 points. So they hold, uh, they are six points back of the Vegas Golden Knights, 10 points back of the Nashville Predators. I, again, think... The the goal now is to get that second wild card. I don't see them thrusting themselves up into that first wild card. There's no um, way. No way. No way. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it happening unless Nashville would have to completely implode. That, that, uh, and, that, and Vegas. The Blues would have to. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, I, they, that's not going to happen. Yep. So uh, they still. I I do think there is still a good chance. With, uh, we talked about strength of schedule a little bit. The Blues could pull together a run here, and Vegas could have some issues. Um, mm. So I don't think it's it's completely out of the question. The Blues make the playoffs. 
I think we'll have a much better idea of what could happen uh, by this time next week. Um, so right now, though, I think it's up in the air. I, I like the Blues' chances, again, with strength of schedule. Um, but, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, you got to play well. I can see. Okay, so if the let's say the Blues lose their next two, okay, and Vegas goes one and one, and they're down by eight points with eight games to go. I can see the team being down and realizing, hey, it's just not going to happen. And I could see a couple more losses coming, and you know mm-hmm. that they might not have had if they had a you know won the previous two. So I think the the, the early on in this first ten game stretch, the, this last game ten game stretch, early on in it is important mm-hmm. because if they if they win two or three here in a row, that's going to give them more confidence, more momentum. If they lose one or two of these next two, that's like oh god, we we blew we blew it. And I can see them kind of. <clears throat> shit in the bed in a couple other games down the stretch. So I think it really depends on how they start this last 10 game stretch as far as how they finish it. Right. And they, you know, that tomorrow night is going to be huge against Calgary, right? Calgary is the team that is uh, be most closely behind us. The blues have a chance to basically, you know, what, what's the Armstrong quote, um, stick the knife in the eye and <laughs> <laughs> just kill. Right. Them. Yeah. It's, with- it's their opportunity to take somebody out. Right. And and use that as a jumping board um, going into the weekend game against San Jose. They have lost um, four straight. Right. Calgary has. Yeah. Calgary's not looking great at this point after trading Hannafin and, um, you know, earlier on Lindholm. Um, but realistically, still the Minnesota Wild, uh, according to Money Puck, have a better chance at making the playoffs than the Blues. That's 7.6 to you, four. You, point oh, five. And- and and that is insane to me because their strength of schedule is harder than the Blues too. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. It's it's just it's got to be money. Puck's model doesn't take doesn't consider strength of schedule. It has to. It, it doesn't. <laughs> Why weigh, wouldn't it? It doesn't weight it. They the play. They we play, want them to. They play Colorado so twice, start. Winnipeg once, LA once, and Vegas twice. What are their records against those teams? Maybe right. they yeah. play really well against them. Maybe. But yeah, it's true. But their strength of schedule is five fifteen, and the Blues is four eighty seven. So, so in terms of schedule left, uh, the Blues do play as uh, Bill mentioned tomorrow night, Thursday night, Calgary Flames seven o'clock here at Scott Trade Center or Scott Trade Wow Enterprise <laughs> Center. Yeah, went back in time there. Uh, Jerome McGinley, watch out for him. He's gonna <laughs> burn up Barrett Jackman, number one defenseman <laughs> and uh, former Blue Kick Craig Conroy. Is it two thousand yeah, solid year? I guess general manager. Uh, and then uh, uh, Saturday, the Blues have a big uh, showing against the San Jose Sharks at 7 o'clock here at Enterprise Center. Uh, and then Monday, they play a very good team in the Edmonton Oilers, 8 o'clock. One of their, one of their bigger uh, games they'll have this year, uh, well, remaining in the year. Uh, it's an 8 o'clock start. It's on ESPN+. Plus. I guess that's why it's at 8, because it's here in St. Louis. Uh, and, uh, then, uh, we'll have a show before then, but, uh, after that, they will then play Nashville, San Jose, Anaheim, Chicago, Carolina, Seattle, and Dallas to close out the year. So you mentioned strength of schedule looking pretty good for the blues. You got a couple rough ones there, I think against Edmonton, Nashville and Carolina and Dallas. But, uh, I you know do what? think the blues could take many of those games. You know what though? The, the game against Carolina is the second to the last game of the season for the Blues. So that game may not mean anything to Carolina. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's that. It may mean everything to the Blues. It may mean nothing to them. And it's a home game for the Blues. So so here's the thing, too, is that the the games against the Carolina Hurricanes and the Edmonton Oilers are both home games for the Blues. Yep. So tough, tough opponents, but we're at home, which where we play very well. Yep. Yeah. It, it still just doesn't feel like having an Eastern Conference game in the last three of the season. Right. Why? We should yeah. be done with Eastern Conference games by the end of February. Yeah. Like, there should never be interconference play between March and April. I don't I don't want interconference play at all. But that's just... that's. that's I'm me. fine with one game. I'm, so you basically have, what, I'd, 16 games against the other conference? I want, I want like, eight games against... Six to eight games against uh, division opponents each season. Give me, give me one game against all the Eastern Conference, and then one game against the Pacific, and give me all conference. Other than that, 
<clears throat> I'd love that. Or just do what or the two. NFL does and just even, go to one division, even, play one division only. Eight, even seven. two against uh, the Pacific because, you know, but because there's some of them, you have three games. Well, home and a home, like, yeah. Why are you playing three games against the Calgary Flames? You know, like what the hell is that? And there are some games in the division the Blues only play three games, I believe. Against yeah, the there is. Yep. The most they play think, is four, and they there are some games they play. Some teams they play. Three. I think Minnesota is one of them. It's dumb. Which it's like you have got to play Minnesota, Colorado, Chicago. It's, you got to play them four times. It's, at it's, least. it's dumb. I I think six. You got to play oh, every team in your division six at least. Hundred percent. Six to eight. I yeah, I agree with you. Uh, and and uh, you play the Pacific. Uh, but I just whatever works out. If you've got okay, we'll play one division from the east or whatever, uh, to fill out the schedule and just rotate it every year like the NFL does. Yep. I don't know. They did that for a couple of years, early early two thousands, and then abandoned it. And I don't understand why. Yeah. It, yeah, that's I well, think. Good debate for another time. At any rate, I, I yeah, did. I, I did want to bring up Ken Morris's uh, comment. Uh, dislike the idea of only dressing eleven forwards and going with seven. I did want to talk about that. Right <laughs> that that blew up. It, uh, are you guys? Are you guys done? Are you, are you done fighting <laughs> over who's going to pull it up? <laughs> that is that is why we need a producer. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I agree with you, Bill. I, I, I if you're against, I, I didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know, I when Sod, you know, had to go to concussion protocol, you're Sun like, oh shit, him. this is bad. Yep. But then when you know, it's like this is going to blow up in our face, and then he came back like, oh yeah, and then Sunquist goes down and like the, the second I saw that with Sung Fist, I'm and like, they didn't, oh, that, that's a knee. He's done. And they didn't even play two of the defensemen very much. Right. So they had seven defensemen. Right. And they, if you're going to have seven defensemen, use them. And I thought, okay, with Sunquist down, what's the logical play here? Prunovich, Move Prunovich on the to wing. a forward. Yes. Yes. Prunovich yes. On Why? The wing. Why not do that? Move yeah. him to it, to it, put him on they, the third They line. used to do that. Uh, Hitch, uh, Hitchcock used to do that with Chris Russell. They play yeah. seven, and if there was an injury, he'd put yes. Russell on wing. Yeah. And it's like, it. yeah, do that. And, and if there's, is the perfect player for that. Right. If there's anything to what Lights Out Geometry was saying earlier about Hitchcock still kind of coaching this team, it, that <laughs> felt like a very Hitchcock thing, right? Oh, tonight we're going to go with seven. We we don't like Bolduc's game right now, so we're going to go with seven defensemen. That's that is the most Hitchcockian thing ever, and I fucking hate it's it. It's like it's like Larusa batting the pitcher eighth. Yeah, oh, like, what are you doing? God. It's, it's don't over. It started on you're, that. You're overthinking things. I think I don't. I don't. I understand wanting options and flexibility with the defense, but if you're dressing seven uh, defensemen and eleven forwards, and you're not even playing uh, two of the defensemen mm-hmm. that much, I think I I, forgot, I had the numbers up earlier. One got like five minutes. Who got yeah. se- seven minutes? I was like, come on, what, what, why, why? It doesn't make any sense. I don't. It's I don't get it. Silly. And then there's an injury. Well, like you and then said, you get? there's an injury, so you're down to ten forwards. So you're still not going to play one of those defensemen. You like right. what the hell? I know you have to move one as a forward. You have to. Yeah, I don't get it. And I get oh, yeah. like I, I think their thinking was because I heard a uh, Kerber say this that Kairu is picking his game up. You want right. him on the ice they, right now. They, they uh-huh. double so you want to be him. able to double shift him as much as possible. But yeah. when you've got an injury, you got to do something. You can't just, well, that guy's injured. We're going to play 10 forwards. Hey, defenseman, you're not going to play the whole second period. Like, what the fuck's the point? It was I, I was waiting for them to say Prunovich is, is Mamuto to a forward spot, and it never happened. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. yeah. Made, Very silly. Made zero sense. Yep. And I, I I should pull up his well stats to see how much he played in that game. Do it. Uh, it was against uh, Vegas. Yeah. Okay. Well, the time on ice, St. Louis. Okay. Does it have the full? Does it? No. Yeah, I'll just pull up the box score. Uh. Well, we can move on while you look that up if you want. It's right. Let's, let's it's, talk. It's right here. Heads. Okay. So defenseman. <laughs> Yeah, uh, pretty much got five minutes and nineteen seconds of ice time, and what Scandella got six fifty six. Even Scandella put him a couple shifts out on wings, you know, mm-hmm. like get these oh, guys some play right. time. They're 
they're they're fucking ready. Like they're they're, they're more fresh than anyone. Scandella on the forecheck with that massive fucking stick that he uses would it would be dangerous on you know like three shifts in the third period. <sighs> or how about how about late in the third period put Krug on the wing and let Scandella play D. Yeah. You know, put like break in, put Breko in front of the net. Put yeah. Breko yeah. in front of the net. <laughs> I would have no problem with them having three defensemen out there if it meant like moving they had one of their big guys doing something important in front of the net. I, I, I there were so many things you could have done because you <clears throat> went eleven seven, I, right? And, but, and they didn't do any of them, right? And what they did was sap the guys' energy, right? Sap the big, you know, the the main players' energies, and that, yep. yeah. Hopefully that's a, a lesson learned and they don't try that shit again. But if Ken Hitchcock is still calling shots, they'll do it again tomorrow and just have different utilization. I need to find that podcast episode. And if I, I will listen to it and we will play the clip next week. Uh, if and that is truly what was said. That's something to ask somebody like uh, one of the beat writers, if, if we could. You know, to say, Lou, hey, what yeah. have you heard, Lou or Jr.? It, just to just yeah. to just to say, hey, you know, is, that, is this? Have you heard? What's the deal with these uh, daily uh, meetings with Hitchcock and and how he's in on decision making? I, which I guess you'd have to figure he would be because he's being paid by the team, so he's doing something. But right. but how much influence does he have over the roster, over the game plan, and stuff like that? Yeah. Yep. That's a good question. I I will ask one of that's them. An ex- I I'd love to. That's a great question. I, I think hopefully we will have an answer for everyone next week. So stay tuned. Uh, rapid fire tidbits from around the NHL. The Yamir Yager bobbleheads have been found. Everybody, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins announced Monday they have secured the missing shipment of bobblehead dolls that the team had reported as stolen on March 14th, <laughs> according to Penguins President of Business Operations Kevin Acklin. The team was notified last week that a special cargo recovery team negotiated the return of the stolen property to a secure warehouse located in Ontario, California. Uh, Quote, another chapter in the storied history of the Penguins. Stay tuned for details on a movie deal with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Acklin said on social media. This is so bananas. Uh, They're they're treating this like it's a joke. You know what I mean? Like it's a marketing thing. Yeah. Uh, the team learned it was the victim of cargo theft after it failed to receive the shipment of Yager bobblehead dolls depicting the NHL legend with his famous salute celebration as scheduled before its game against the visiting San Jose Sharks on March 14th. Yeah, this is weird. This has been a weird story. Yeah, the whole Yager commercial that yeah. was, they're making a joke out of it. I'm like, they, yeah, the, the uh, there was an article the other day that said that was just um, trying to lean into it a little bit, but I get it. it, I, it they're trying it to make light of a situation. Marketing, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I heard he was. Situation. I heard he was in town, and so they were like, "What do you think about yeah. like we just got this news? We record something real quick." And right. he was like, "Yeah." And, which, and which they I, had a mock up of the the bobblehead in uh, that Ackerland Ackerland guy's office that they used for that. Okay, filming which I I like. I mean, it's 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 different. I I like the humor in it. Um, uh, I think it would have gone south really bad if it had been a guerrilla marketing, a fake news story that they tried to do something with. It would have pissed off a lot of people. Uh, I've you know, yeah. if it's a bobblehead, you get pissed off how why? But uh, just I don't know. Uh, I, I like the fact that I guess they lean into it, but uh, it 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 does make you it does lead the door open for conspiracy theories, does it not? <laughs> well, and it it's so weird because Way this is a, I mean this is a direct quote: a special cargo recovery team negotiated the return of the stolen property to a secure warehouse. <laughs> this is so, so weird. You're telling me you it's... literally had like an investigation to find this, and we're sitting here making jokes about it? Like that's. It's, a... it's, it's yeah. odd. It, it is right. it is very 80s movie like. Yeah. Uh, right. It was that team was led by Liam Neeson and <laughs> John Claude Van Damme very... involved somewhere. Right. I want right. my bobbleheads back. <laughs> <laughs> I have skills. Very <laughs> specific set skills. of skills. Just ask the bobbleheads, they'll agree. <sighs> Steven Seagal uh, is probably in there acting very poorly at some point, too. Oh, mm. man. Um, 
He's the have truck driver the that movie... they get stolen from. <laughs> have you ever heard of the movie Knock Off? I've heard Face Off. Knock Off is... I mean, I can't, you can't, I can't make this up. I'm not making this up, folks. There was a movie in the you 90s. You sound like a stand-up comedian. Before starring you Jean-Claude Van Damme and Rob Schneider. And it was called Knock Off. They were... I, I could be telling this wrong, but I did see it, and it was... Oh my God, as bad as you think it is. They were jean salesmen. Like they sold like jeans and manufactured jeans. And they found out that they were getting them from some awful Japanese mafia crew. And so Jean Claude Van Damme and Rob Schneider basically go take down this. He's got a cold. (laughs) Jean Claude with a D. Sorry. Yes, I I do have a cold. I I think it said Jean. Claude, no, Jean Claude, um, <laughs> but yeah, they ended up uh, basically taking down this like Japanese mafia, and it's the most ridiculous story Kusa. in the world. So trees, trees says they hired Danny Ocean to recover the bobbleheads. I think Danny Ocean stole them, but that's possible. <laughs> Did they hire uh, Jerry? Was it Jerry? Not Jerry Garcia. What's his name? <laughs> Jerry Garcia. Oh, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the original. <laughs> oh hell. The Something original. Garcia. The original Andy, guy Andy, they stole Andy Garcia. From. Andy, Andy Garcia. Andy Garcia. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I, Carlos I like... Mencia. Carlos Mencia. Oh, <laughs> joke stealer. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, I guess, but all is well in, in Pittsburghville. And you, if you had a ticket to that game, you apparently had two opportunities to redeem your coupon. Yeah, uh, didn't, to get your bubble head. Didn't they give him something Aramir else? Called them. Or was it was just a, a coupon? No, they, they gave him somewhere a, else. They was, gave him a, a ticket to redeem it. Was a voucher, it. yeah. Yeah. See, they should have given him something extra. You know, I like, you know, maybe like, like a half off uh ticket to a future game and the bobblehead or something. Maybe they are. I uh, maybe well, I they know. should. They should. I mean, yeah, they're putting people out a little bit. You know, they gotta, they gotta go get the bobblehead now. Yep, agree. Well, anything else tonight, folks? Uh, we didn't really talk too much about the the Cairo. Well, at least we did the Cairo uh, stuff with the, the the hat trick and the the folks coming out of the woodwork. Uh, you know, saying this is who he's been all season. Blah 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 blah. No, that's no. We always hear that, right? <laughs> like we heard that shit. Uh, we heard that shit with with Zach Sanford when he had a four goal game. I remember people coming in his defense. This is who he is. No, I for- it's not. I forgot about the Zach Sanford defenders. Oh my god. Yep. Ridiculous. So yeah, and and I had just back and forth with a number of people, but the one is that the the Kairu uh, fanboy, Foppy, uh, invited him on the. Sh- I invited him to come on and say, you know what, you're ridiculous. Let's talk about it on the show. And nothing. He didn't reply back. So yep. yep. Keyboard warrior. Keyboard warriors. Yeah, I we've I've had conversations with him. I know oh, we haven't heard from him tonight. Uh, Justin Scott. I know he's gotten into it with him on social media yeah. as well. Yeah, um, yeah. And he's he's been messaging me about it, and I'm just like, dude, I gave up on that guy. Like, uh, yeah, clearly well, he's he's a Ka- Kairu stand. Which hey, you want to be a fanboy? I'm totally <laughs> cool with that. But like. If you're going to argue with people who actually understand how the game is played, you better be able to back it up. And, and well, he, he is he, not. Well, he tries to with advanced stats, but the, the like, we've gone over that a, a million times. We've seen this kind of thing with with you know the Allen fanboys when Allen was here. Uh, I forgot about the Sanford fanboys, which was so weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's just bananas. Um, there's always somebody right that uh, you know someone's in love with, and they. They just defend them to the death, no matter what. So I mean, and it, and it's funny because, you know, people will get called Kairu haters. I don't hate anybody on this team. I no. got us. I root for everyone to play at the highest level possible and impress the shit out of me. I want that. I don't want people to go on the ice and play like shit. Was there ever a blue that you rooted against? Uh, rooted against while the game was going on? No, uh, I I can Eric tell you Brewer. I, well, there was I I disliked Brewer a lot just because of the way he played. Uh, I I I thought he was just a, a huge disappointment, and I was just my my st- thing with him was he was extremely frustrating, and I yeah. hated being frustrated 
every game by him. And that was where that stemmed from. I wanted him to play well. I mean, otherwise I would just hate him. But, I, you know, the frustration comes from me wanting him to play better and him not. So then I'm frustrated. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, Brewer was one I didn't like. I'll admit, I've never liked Barrett Jackman. I never understood the love affair with him. Um, but I, like I never I like rooted him. against anybody. Um, the player that I've disliked the most, quite honestly, that you guys might be shocked to hear this, shares a first name with me. Can you think of who that is? Finley? Jeff Finley. Not Jeff Finley. Finley had his haters when he was here. Uh, yes, he did. Jeff Boy Whitka. What, the oh. other guy in well, the pronger trade okay because he they he came up and he had like three or four games where he played okay and because Brewer was playing so bad John Davidson came out and was like well the cornerstone of this trade was Roy Whitka that's the one that we're excited about he was fucking terrible one of the worst defensemen I have ever seen play in the NHL and I hated that guy. I could not stand <laughs> Jeff Woywitka. He drove me up a goddamn wall. Brewer, every now and then, he would, like, make a good shot. You know, like, he had a good shot, and we would use it. It was oh. like, oh, hey, Brewer, good work. Get the puck to the yeah. net. Woywitka yeah. was, oh, I'm just going to fucking skate it into the corner, and then I'm going to lose it in a puck battle and not hustle back. Like, you're a defenseman, dude. What are you doing? You know what pissed me off about Brewer, though, is that he was good. He was on Team Canada. He was a good player. Right. And then he came here and he sucked. I was like, what the? F-? It's like, God damn it. You know, yeah. I was like, I don't know what. It just And he and he had that that look on his face that's a like glazed over like deer in headlights all the time look. Uh, never got passionate. It didn't seem like. Um, had as much emotion on the ice as a wet blanket. Uh, Jake Allen kind of person. I just, but he was good in the room. He's you know what? Room. I, and, and you know, it, if you're gonna suck, at least be passionate about it and just bust your ass out there. I didn't see that from him either. So I don't know. I just it, 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 there was all kinds of things with him and me. Uh, Rich Pilon was another one I didn't care for. Oh yeah, he stole money from the Blues. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jay McKee. He was, he he stole money too. Right? I didn't yeah. I didn't hate Jay McKee to be honest. I, did, I don't I hate him. A I lot did. of people did. I did not. I thought he was. I I, I thought he was just not, overhyped by the organization. Like him. I, well, he was he, he was pretty good. Yeah, and he was a good shot blocker. Yeah, he was. So he was, was when he was in up. Buffalo. But yeah, yeah. I, well, he he had the Blues record until this season of uh, blocked shots in now a season. Colton Pareko. Now it's Colton Pareko. Yeah. Um, and what's his name? Uh, the guy who was in trouble recently, which we just found out with uh, Mario Lemieux uh, in uh, the hotel room with the woman. Uh, oh, uh, um, uh, 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 we got him uh, in that trade uh, with Butcher um, Quinn, Dan Quinn. Yeah. Dan uh yeah. Dan Quinn, I hated Dan Quinn because he yeah. was a is a player before he came here. He had his he was decent, pretty good. And then he just didn't do anything here. I yeah. I didn't yeah. I didn't like him at all here. And the fact that we traded half the fucking team to get him and Butcher. Right. And uh he, Quinn Quinn was great for the Flames in 86 when you know we lost the uh the game after the Monday Night Miracle. He was dynamic in that series for them. And I think we still, you know, lusted after him six years, seven years later when we made that stupid fucking trade. He never played here, but uh, Anthony Peluso was a guy the Blues drafted Ooh, that I yeah. fucking hated. He, I met him in person. And he was the biggest dick I've ever met. And I was like, fuck this guy. You're not even in the NHL. Go to Ken, hell. Ken Morris says Mike Danton. And I, I, I'll yeah. let you know on a secret. I liked Mike Danton. Uh, I did too. As a player, up until the moment, right up until right. the uh, the day after they they were eliminated from the playoffs, and the news broke where he was trying to hire somebody to kill. I, I, so I was that his agent. That was, um, yeah. Then it was just, and I, and then I didn't even hate him. It was just like a disbelief that that had happened, and uh, that was a day, man. I, I that that overshadowed for me the Blues being eliminated that year. That whole that whole next day was like so uh, like the let's go blues.com forum was just like just lit up with everybody talking about it and and providing sources from wherever they were in the country, what people were saying, what newspapers were saying. Uh, I found the police report online, a PDF. I was reading through it. It was just it was interesting and shocking. And it's like, 
good lord. So, and before that, I liked him. He was a shit disturber, and I liked the fact that other teams hated him. He could score a little bit. What know. year? What year did that break? Oh, I'm gonna. Well, oh six. Maybe it was the lockout. Oh four. Oh, was it oh four? Yeah, because he was arrested when they got back to St. Louis from losing to San Jose. Yeah, I know that. that that's when it happened. That was oh four. Yeah. How was the thing? Hey, was look the- who's here. Oh, Nandor. It's Nandor De Laurentiis. De Laurentiis. Yeah, he's a little kitty. It was 04. Is, yeah, you're right. I, I could have sworn I was at that, the uh, at SIUE then, and I was. Because I'm trying to... Re- so I found out about it. We were driving to Columbia to catch David Cross do stand-up. And huh, nice. That was before... Oh, wait, hold on. That was before the... He, like... Sp- I don't know. Maybe, maybe I could get just basic news on the phone yeah, it was before smartphones. But yeah, April sixteenth, two thousand four, two days after the Blues were eliminated. So it was two days after. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Dan was arrested and charged yeah, with conspiracy right. to commit murder. I I remember getting the news while we were driving to Columbia, and it must have been on my not razor. I never had a razor. I had the Sprint knockoff. <laughs> Nice. Did you Does guys Bill Laurie see... count? I hated Bill Laurie. I rooted really against oh, him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, Bill Laurie is a two-sided coin for me. I, I, he did try to win and try to bring a cup here, but then when he realized he couldn't get an NBA team, also, then Pitch he abandoned quit. ship. He abandoned ship, and Man, that a bitch. pissed me off. Cost us pronger. Yep. He cost us cost pronger. Us pronger and yep. cost us a, a lot of fucking rough years there as Blues fans. Yeah. Yeah, that was bad. Um, yep. So I, I, I loved his attitude from the start and the money he sunk into the team, and he tried to win, which I loved. But then, yeah, he just told about face. Oh, oh I, I, I remember team. when he when uh, the Blues uh, beat the Stars. They uh, swept the Stars in four games. And him and his wife, uh, I'm trying to blink on her name, um, they were down on the glass, like banging on the yeah. glass. They were so excited. And I was like... These owners are fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, they they were sports fans. I mean, he was a was he a Mizzou graduate, a huge Mizzou fan, I think he was, and he wanted to bring the NBA here. And I mean, if he gets an NBA team here, maybe he's a great owner. But right. uh, you but, know, but didn't didn't he also try to name the basketball arena the Page Flory Arena? And yeah, she, for like, his daughter. graduated by a year. Yeah. Terrible, terrible his ideas. Daughter. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. All right, I think it's time to close her up, boys. I agree. Well, uh, I'm not ready. I'm ready now. Here we go. Support for Let's Go Blues Radio is brought to you in part by ID Life, the world's only truly personalized vitamin platform based on a health assessment of your DNA. Visit rockinthenidlife.com for more information. That's rockinthenidlife.com. And get 10% off by emailing Dustin at rockinthenidlife at gmail.com. And tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you. And by Mike Burgoyne from Real Brokerage Realty. Email him at strike with, uh, sorry, Mike at strikewithmike.com. Today, for all of your home buying and selling needs, that's Mike at strikewithmike.com. That will ha- wrap up episode 25 of season 13 of the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Let's go, Blues Radio. Thanks for listening, and thanks to those who participated in the YouTube and Facebook live chats during the live show. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. For Kurt Price and Bill Day, as well as the absent producer, Austin, I'm Jeff Ponder, and this was Let's Go Blues Radio. Until next time, everyone, fuck the Golden Knights. Let's go Blues. It's crunch time, baby. Let's go Blues. Is it wrong that I had wished Mike Danton had succeeded because of what kind of person David Frost is? Let's no, go, it, let's go Mike Danton. <laughs> Maybe he can still succeed. Fuck off, David Frost. Uh, the Chiefs are at home tonight against Cyanusport at the War Memorial at 8. Good seats are still available. A look at sports. I think that went very well. Thank you for listening to Let's Go Blues Radio. Now take off, hosers. I want you to have a heart attack and die so that we never have to do this shit again. Well, there's 90 minutes of your life you'll never get back. Sorry. <laughs> St. Louis Blues, St. Louis Blues, have you heard the news about our St. Louis Blues?
only just begun. They're on their way to number one. Now there's no more blues for our St. Louis blues. The blues are on the ice tonight again. They're rough and tough and got the stuff to win. They'll always get one more, no matter what the score. They are quite a hockey team, my friend.